We are hopefully live. Did I do the wrong thing? I did the right thing. How's it going, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to another live stream. Let's see who's all here today. We've got Elizabeth and Shottle PF in the house. Fabrico's here. Uh, Mo Mo is it Moji or Moji? Moji. I want to say Moji. Uh, Jay's here. Aaron's here. Iconic Maker Viking. Thanks for joining us. Maple Leaf is in the house. Maurice, Andre. How's everybody doing? Uh, we've got a special guest here today. I think many of you know him. I think this man needs little to no introduction, but I will bring him up here and let him say hello. We've got the one and only Pooch. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? How's it How's it going today? Happy Happy Wednesday. Happy Hump Day as I kick over my trash. <laughs> it's funny. Hump Day is not a... I think it's more of a U.S. thing because I said it one time and it was a mixed bag of people looking at so me like, like what, what, what the hell's a hump day <laughs> versus <laughs> like, yeah, I get it. It's Wednesday. Every day is hump day. <laughs> yeah, no, we're getting over the hump of the week, right? Yeah, exactly. Good. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for this this live stream. Last time I saw you was actually at LBX, the shirt that you're wearing, which is which is kind of funny. <laughs> I know, man. How long ago was that? It felt like... Uh, it was like... October. It was right before Halloween. It was like the weekend <sighs> before. So it's been five months already, which is ah, that's crazy. crazy. It was a good event, though. We had a it lot was of fun. fun. It was fun. I, I can't yeah. give out detail, but there's there's info happening about V2 of this. So I'm excited when I've got when I've got some more info. I'll, I'll be, you know, when oh, I can, man. I'll talk to you about it. I can't, so, I can't wait. I can't wait. And maybe, maybe we can see some of the people in the chat there, you know? Yeah. Year two. Yeah. That'd be awesome. So, so today we are going to be building a Prusa Mark IV, which is something I am really excited about. Let me pull up the side cam here. Um, usual disclosure, the kit was sent to me, but that's basically the extent of it. So any feedback slash opinions are that of my own. The only agreement is that I'm going to be building this thing. So, um, I haven't actually had a chance at all to play around with the Mark IV. I've only, uh, Mark III S Plus is the last Prusa I played around with. So I'm very excited specifically to see what the next extruder with the load cell and the new extruder assemblies like because the tool head on the Prusa has always been something that I've liked. Like with the filament runout sensor, the auto feeding, all that stuff, it's been cool. So um, you've built, I would assume quite a few, I know I know you've built quite a few Mark III, III S Pluses, but how many Mark IVs have you built, uh, yeah. Pooch? Yeah, so, so I, when I originally set up my print farm almost five years ago now, maybe not quite five years ago, I did 30 Mark III's and I built all of those from kit. Uh, and that was a lot of work. Yep. And now I am going <laughs> through the process of upgrading all of them to, well, not quite all of them, but about 24 of them to Mark IVs. And so I've got about eight built so far. I told you I'm excited to be, do a little build along with you because yeah, yeah. I've, I've been a little bit behind. The print farm's kind of half threes, ha not quite half fours yet. And so uh, any excuse to do more building uh, is fun and exciting for me. Are you uh, building so we're getting... from scratch with this or is this a conversion that you're going to be doing while I'm doing no, this one? So, so I, I'm cheating a little bit. So you're already behind. Uh, okay. Got... As usual. <laughs> Anyone that's seen, I mean, <laughs> per usual. Let me turn this off and come back a little bit. Um, I've got, uh, I've got my frame and my power supply. So basically I stripped down one of my Mark III. So we, we, I'm not too far ahead of you. This is a pretty okay. fast, so we'll, you know, we'll let you catch up there and okay. then we'll just jump in. Uh, and the process is pretty much the same at this point. When you go from three to four, uh, you're, you're really stripping it all the way down to the frame, all the yeah. way down okay. to the frame. I um, really quickly wanted to say, I think it was, was it Jeff, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships. I've got, I don't think Pooch can hear them, which makes me sad, uh, but I've got some sound I can see them. Let's do I can cheer. See, I can see the, the highlight there. Let's hear an air horn. And then uh, Shadow, thank you very much for the 14 months. So it was funny, I, I talked to Steve and I had mentioned that I, I think that I'll be able to get this printer built in like two streams. And he looked at me and he said, no way. And I said, what do you mean, dude? I built the first Prusa Mark III S Plus on stream. And he said, yeah, but it wasn't you and Pooch. And I was like, you got a good point, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I will do my best. Uh, I, the streams are known to diverge into food talk and rants about, you know, whatever, you know, whatever topic pops up. So, but I'm gonna do my best to sort of um, keep things somewhat on, on the right path here. So 
Uh, let me see. Let me pull up. I mean, the... that's the fun of it, man. We're not we're not like in a big hurry here or anything, right? No. Like we're no, we're gonna not. Have some fun. We're, we're gonna not. have some snacks. Yeah, we people definitely want to build some along. snacks. Look at this. We already got people saying blame pooch in the chat. It's a it's yeah. a known thing. It's a common <laughs> hashtag. Yeah, I started so, thinking about it and was like, man, that's right. Like, I was like, I know Pooch and I know that Pooch can talk and I know that I can talk and you get those two things together and it's like, man. So um, I'm going to really quickly go through just getting things out of the box. I've got the initial guide pulled up. Um, I'm not going to go in heavy amounts of detail through everything in the box because I feel like it's sort of it's been done at this point. Um, hey, Pedro, what's for dinner? I don't know. Erin and Jackson are in Arizona with her sister. And so it's been a lot of <laughs> grub. So Chipotle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, last night I had, uh, uh, I went to, uh, it was Taco Tuesday. So I went to a restaurant and just sat there and ate some tacos by myself. So we'll see, I, a TBD at this point. Um, so, okay, yeah, let's run through things. So we've got our paper, just thank you for purchasing with uh, some QR codes. Dax got our sort of bomb, maybe not a bomb, but at least our reference. It looks like paperwork for all of the different hardware that's included in here. Uh, that's the cheat sheet. That's a handy thing to have there, my um, friend. Don't yeah, I, I bet. No, I, I bet. I usually, um, I don't know if you've seen it, but I usually have a little tool organizer for every build I'm doing, like a you know Voron DIY thing. If, mm. if I don't have, if I don't have good organization of my hardware it's a frustrating experience so i, I like right. having references we've got our standard i think it's just a standard yeah desktop type psu we've got our gummy bears which let's be honest is the reason for the build that's why we're <laughs> all gotta here have, <laughs> um we've got our let's see flash drive i don't know what's on here is this just is there PDF on here, Poot? What is the flash drive? You know, that's or? that's got a couple of like, uh, you know, sample prints and gotcha. some models if you wanted to, some G code. Yep, yep, yep. Got our 3D printing handbook, which is a nice, oh, this is actually specific to, so this was updated then for the Mark IV. This is not the same. Yeah. Yeah, this is yeah, definitely not the, the same. That's one of the nice things. And I know they, they you know, Prusa spends a good amount of money like publishing these guides for a lot of people, but you know, I, you, you know, I've, I've sold product for a while and, and uh, when you're doing like a build guide and stuff like that, everybody's got a different way that they want to see it done or how they learn. And sure. some people are like old school, like I want to go through, you know, the printed manual. And so yeah. that's all been something they include, even though it's all online. If you want the most up to date thing, you want to go online. But yeah, so it's interesting. Um, let me try to really quick catch up here. Um, let's see, Brick Bros, are the gummy bears any good? I love, I have a huge sweet tooth, man. So anything Haribo, um, I recently, one of my uh, buddies here showed me that they've got uh, tahine gummy bears and those are pretty freaking good, man. Um, cereal for dinner, such a child. The cereal's always uh, the right choice. Uh, hey Redacted, <laughs> how's it going? Pedro just finished building your first try today. Nice, congrats. Uh, I did it while watching Pooch and Steve's video building a trident. Nice. Um, yeah, you, you still got your, is your trident still up and running? The one you guys built it, a while it, back? It is. Steve actually came up to the shop like a couple, it was probably two weeks ago now. And we like cranked out some stuff on the trident. He helped me get the, uh, uh, the input shaping uh, and pressure advanced tuned and dialed nice. on it. And so it's like, mm, it's making some nice prints now. It, it's a nice machine. The, the trident's a really cool machine. So I love it. Smooth PEI. When you order this, um, do you have the option for smoother powder typically, or is it? Yeah, smooth you do. As the, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah okay. I mean, it's a, it's a drop-down choice when you buy. And then we've got our checks. And if I remember correctly, the um, because I think when I bought, I bought a mini a couple of years ago, and I think if you buy it pre-assembled, there's more checks, right? I believe like it goes yep. through. Yeah, there's more checks involved with that. So. Yep. All right, what else we got in here? We've got Delta PSU. So this is our power supply. We have got, I'm really jealous of your your cam, dude. That front cam, the fact that you, the question I've got, so so for anyone that's seen Steve, or not Steve, <laughs> we're talking about Steve, Pooch being Pooch, followed Pooch. around um, and zoomed in. It's a it's a like Galvo, gy or gyroid based, not Galvo, but gyroid gimbal, based. Gimbal, 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 it's on yeah. A, it's a PTZ um, cam, yeah. So it can it can maneuver with me if I want. I can I can do different like presets. So I can like kind of dial in cool, the on different stuff. So, like, 
I, yeah. I really like the dynamic uh, sort of zooming you've got going on there. Is it? Is it? Um, are you controlling those through OBS or is it through their software that's like piggyback to OBS? So, so it's it's uh, actually I actually have it. I'm controlling it right now through Stream Deck, uh, okay. and there's a plugin that they make for Stream Deck. But then they also have, of course, their own piece of software where you can do all kinds of fine grain control. It's a really, really cool yeah, setup. You got me. I've had it about two weeks. <laughs> You got me hyped, man. You're gonna tell me after this call, watch like use uh, use code pooch at checkout, and I'm gonna be like, I knew I, it. No, I knew not, it. Not sponsored, <laughs> no affiliate. No, but I, I love it. The video quality is good, everything, and it, and yeah. it can do native NDI. So if you if you ever want to do like a network interface, like just from that, you don't have to go through OBS or anything like that. And and you can uh, do multicam with it as well, where they can. Uh, you know, talk to each other and, and yeah, man, it, it gets wild. Yeah, it's definitely something I'm gonna look into because like, I just, I'm happy with the front cam for the most part and the side cam, but like some, some, the ability to just change in and punch in on something from the front seems like a really cool thing. Um, okay, so going through boxes, we've got fasteners and our electronics in one, mm -hmm, we've mm -hmm. got uh, printed parts, orange and buddy case. So yeah, I am, um, I know, like, I don't know if Zombie's in chat, but Zombie just built a Mark IV and he went with all ASA parts. I'm going with just the standard PETG parts. Um, I've got between, what is this guy? Uh, front and rear sets, these are aluminum parts. I I've got a handful of printers that are sort of my ABS machines currently. So mm -hmm. honestly, like, mm -hmm. I really could use a Pet G workhorse um, and also some TPU stuff. So. For now, I don't plan on, like, I just want to stick with the stock parts. My question for you is, have you done much ABS printing with the PETG parts or not so much? I, I, I have actually, I've done I've done both. So uh, when Steve and I did uh, some Mark IV building a couple weeks back, um, we printed the parts in ASA with the notion that, or that the, the idea is um, most of, my Mark IVs, all of my Mark IVs right now are in the Prusa enclosures. Okay. And so, they're like, over time, if you're running and it's staying heated and stuff like that, like, it could be some PETG sag. could yeah. sag. I haven't seen it happen yet. I've, I've got some, I've been kind of watching both. So I've got sure. my SI ones, I've got my PETG ones that are all in enclosures. They've all been performing great so far. Yeah. But time, I suppose, will tell. I think that, um, Alan over on Mandic really, I, I know he just built an enclosure and I think he's still rocking the stock, um, I think he's still rocking the stock PETG parts that came on it. So I'm curious, cause I, I assume he's gonna stress test it for some builds. So I'm curious to see sort of what he also ex experiences with, you know, with using it. My gut tells me that even with the enclosure, it just doesn't like going full bore, doing ASA, doing ABS, anything like the max heat that you can do. I, I don't think it generates enough ambient heat in the enclosure even sure. to like really affect it. Yeah. Because here's what happens. If you get too hot, uh, that, that enclosure is actually well tuned for thermals. Um, if it gets too hot in there, then that uh, degrades the ability for the heat sink uh, to actually operate and you start to get jams and stuff like that. Sure. And so if it's getting so hot that the pet G parts are starting to creep, I would imagine you're gonna run into issues with uh, cooling the, the machine uh, properly, cooling that heat sink properly so that you don't get jams. So that's my theory, but I don't yeah. have any data on that yet. N Nero's in chat too saying that he's got his Mark IV uh, with the PTG parts in an enclosure that's been printing ABS and ASA fine so far, but that he does have a spare set of ASA parts in the in the instance Waiting. that he does run it. Yeah, just in yeah. case it's, it's sort of a yeah. backup. Also, hi Nero. Um, uh, hey, hey, can you? Okay, so we've got our, is this, yeah, it is fucking, so we've got our extrusion set. Uh, we have got, oh, sounds like, this is what I heard in the shipping. It was like, I hope that's not a bad thing, but it's, it's the rods. <laughs> it's just um, the rods. I think I told you that. Yeah. Yeah. We've got uh, smooth rods. And I'm going to grab my this? printed parts while you're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds, sounds great. Uh, we've got our motor kit, which is a, feels like a big box for a motor kit. Oh, uh, it's all motors, baby. Oh yeah. It's all motors and it looks like. The Z uses integrated lead screws. I can't remember, was the Mark 3S Plus? It probably was, but was Mark 3S Plus using integrated lead screws on Z? It's been yeah, a while. Yeah, okay. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And okay. in fact, they're they're pretty much the same. The this Zs are pretty much the same. On the Mark IV, the X and the Y are the VFA uh, higher. Yeah. I think they're a, a shallower step. Are they, did they also switch from 1.8 degree to 0.9 steppers or vice yeah, versa? Okay. That's what I believe. Yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. 
Okay. But not on the not on the Z. Not necessary on the Z. Sure, sure. Uh, let's see, Nero, have you been able to get a cereal for your Milo yet? It was oh, um, followed. That's funny. It followed me over to the. <laughs> there we go. I'm back. Um, let's see. I have had my Mercury PTG in a printed solid enclosure for at least a few years. Printed mostly ABS and ASA, and never had a PTG printer part fail on. Yeah, that's good. That's good to know. Pooch cam lost tracking. Yeah, it's funny when uh, me and Pooch did a sort of quick call. Uh, the other day to just make sure that things were sort of working when pooch left the room the camera like whipped to the side <laughs> it was like i'm following pooch to the end um okay so we've got everything out i don't think i'm gonna just i'm not gonna ask i'm gonna just look at the documentation and only ask questions when i feel like it's really necessary pooch but i'm just gonna i'm gonna, I'm yeah, gonna assume i don't, I don't want to bias the process so like I, I can just be color commentary or we can just build or i can just keep my mouth shut like i really oh, want the experience no. to be yours <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, and is genuine, like, you know, yeah, no, and, I, and totally, we're just having fun, man. Yeah. I've known for any, everyone, I've known Pooch for quite a long time. I think I was talking to you know, like six years ago, I met Pooch at a, at a 3d printer meetup that was at matter hackers. So we're eating tacos. So very on brand, <laughs> very, man, I want some tacos now, Pooch, man. Yeah. I need to, even though I had them yesterday. So, okay. Uh, the tool package can be found in the fasteners and LA box tool package includes. Okay. So we've got some tools, which I think I remember. Um, I think I remember from the previous build. So we'll take the tools out. I do. I, I am not going to limit myself to just using the included tools because I've got tools behind me as well, but mm -hmm. I will take the tools out. Let me see if I can find them actually. Let's see. This says, Ooh, an extruder box. This is electronics box. This is the buddy board. Um, okay. Yeah, I've been so doing enough of these now that like I definitely I don't know if it's cheating, but I definitely like get my uh, my power tools out and look very low torque, but yeah. obviously kind of speeds the thing along. I got my little uh, my little mini dude, which I love, and my mini Milwaukee guy. But I feel uh, like you have to. Um with the number that you're building. It's like with me, I, so I've got these, you can hardly, I don't think you can even see them, but I've got one, two, three, four, five of these Alex drawers from Ikea. And the first mm -hmm. one I built, you know, mm -hmm. I'm like looking through the paper manual, yada, yada, like following the instructions. By the fifth one, man, I was like shortcutting pre, pre line. Like you just, you got, you build a little bit of an assembly line when you're doing repetitive tasks so many times, you know? Yeah, you should see, so over it, you can't see off camera, but I've got like six, machines in process and so I'll, like I have this process where I'll do like a sub assembly so I'll do like all the x-axis all the frames all the x-axis yep. all the next extruder and it's way more efficient to do them in bulk that way than like yep. trying to do one at a time I'm sure okay so those are the, our tools uh also hey uh tripod this here uh how are these cool peeps on YouTube how's it going you're going to I don't think I even asked you perf uh perf tripod Pooch, you're, you're going to Rocky Mountain right you got to be yep Yep, yeah, I'll cool. be at Rocky Mountain. Sick. Uh, and a couple, of, we got some some events coming up. I've got I got some travel coming up this month. We'll do a Seattle trip, LA trip, uh, Colorado for Rocky Mountain, possibly in Orlando. I'm not sure on that yet. So open sauce in Ju June, I think. Open that's what sauce in June, yeah. man. I am yep. super excited for that one. I was just down in San Francisco this weekend and uh, uh, went by the Cow Palace. Just like walked in, they were breaking down this rave, and it's like a massive. I don't know if you've ever been to the Cow Palace, but uh -uh, no. it is massive. So like, if they fill that place, it's gonna be insane, banana. <laughs> I don't know if I think we're. Like, I think Lightburn's going. I don't know who's going. I won't yeah. say no, uh, but June. I know in June, I think there's a few different events going on, so I'm not really sure how that's all gonna pan out. But it sounded. I only heard positive things about last year, and it was the first year. So I know things were, you know, being worked out. Um, so I can only imagine that V2 or year two is going to be even more awesome. So, um, oh, yeah. Here. oh yeah. Uh, GPs is asking, is your kid a full Mark IV um, and Pooch is a Mark IV upgrade? Yeah, so mine's full Mark IV. Pooch is, it's a Mark III S plus. I think he said that he stripped down to the frame and you're doing, is it a 3.9 that you're upgrading it to or no? No, it's no, like this is a full four that I'm doing. So it's gonna be very similar. The only difference guys is that this frame is actually the old Mark III frame. The new one is really slick. If you wanna pull that frame out real yeah, quick yeah, yeah. and take a look at it. It's it's um, die cast now, right? It's Versus die cast yeah. now and it just looks, oh, oh chef's kiss. So it's yeah. like a touch like thicker, but like in all the, like the, the, it's negligible in terms of like frame flex or anything, but like, look at that back. 
like that hex pattern that you see on it. So it's and... still got the same pretty, I remember the, the, the sort of sparkliness. It might be a little more sparkly than I remember on the Mark III. I wish I had, I wish I, I don't have it anymore, but I wish that I did so for reference. But yeah, this is the cool hexagon pattern. And I know that they beefed this up from the um, Mark III S Plus. I know that was something that I've, I've heard talked about a few times is that the frame yeah. is just beef here now, but yeah, this thing's pretty. But dim really dimensionally, cool. it's gotta be the same because basically the screws have to be the same length on the three and the four. So you can see that's why there's kind of some recessing in there yeah. in some places and stuff so that everything kind of stays the same. And that's actually even a newer version of the frame. So I've got a Mark IV, but like, it looks like they've gone even a little bit further with some of their little, uh, texturing and stuff it's it's really cool it's neat yeah it's definitely nice I'll, well i guess since we got this out i'll take this and pop this out um uh andrew yeah, and thank you, you gotta, for you gotta the 10 dollars oh yeah the beefed up frame as he says uh hexagons are the best of guns fund <laughs> Be best of guns baby yeah even the uh like you said i think you're saying right now but the bed itself has uh, sort of that same kind of reinforced mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pattern to it or design to it so yeah they've really oh. leaned into the the aluminum casting process and it's just like really it's really slick yeah it's, it's pretty stuff let's see uh hi daniel hey what's up sven um by the way i'm watching while coding so if i say something strange in chat i'm not spamming i've just been using the wrong keyboard perfect <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for the heads up i won't uh I won't question Code and it. chat, baby. Code and chat. I love it. <laughs> okay. So we got our tools, additional utilities for this guide. Some stuff's in the manual require commonly available items such as scissors, looks like mm -hmm. marker, um, paper towels, which I think I've got plenty of, uh, label guides, all boxes and bags included parts for the builder labeled. Labels include list of contents. Nice. You can download a cheat sheet, uh, which is, I think what we just looked at. So yep, I think there is it. already, it's included. Yep. Um, Fasteners are divided into individual bags according to its type, not into packages for individual chapters as it was previously. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Um, there's a bag with spare parts, spare fasteners included in each bag of fasteners. A number of parentheses below the fasteners indicates the number of extra. Good to know. Um, when you browse the guide, you can view the original images in high resolution for clarity. Just hover your cursor over an image and click the magnifier icon. Good to know. Most of the 3D printed parts are marked with their version. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. E, F, and G series, example E1. Those parts are printed on Free Research Farm and are distributed in the kit. Uh, R, S, and TX, those parts are, oh, okay, gotcha. So it differentiates between what's like officially made versus what someone's printed out at home. Um, yep, in, in case that's part of their quality story, control process too. A certain price finally I'm done. Um, lost any instructions, missing screw or crack printer, let us know. You can, okay, so we've got our support avenues, which is email or the live chat. I did, I remember I had to use the live chat when I built the MK3S Plus because I built it and one of the bearings uh, on the x-axis was making a loud sound and mm -hmm. chat was quick to respond. I mean, this was November of 2022. And they ended up sending a set of all new X uh, LM8 UU bearings along with the linear rods, which the linear rods was unnecessary to send, but I wasn't upset to have them. Just Never heard to have some extra rods, huh? Yeah. Um, 3D printed parts are very precise. However, there still might be tolerances, therefore it might happen that a nut won't fit. Uh, you can use the X tool holder included in the package to insert any screw. What is that tool holder? Interesting. That looks new. Huh. Okay. Uh, every time we recommend you use a screw point technique, you will be reminded with Joe's avatar. Yeah, I remember when I was, I don't know what I was building, but there was another printer I was building. Um, hey, Tom Lama. I was building another printer and someone said just to basically for the nut to pop, like push a screw through screw it on and then pull it through in some situations to help get it into the pocket a little bit easier. So I got to remember to do that if, if there are any issues. Um, make sure the ESD uh, only unpack them when you need them. Good to know. Da, da, da. And then reward yourself, which I am very much so looking forward to some gummy bears. Uh, how to successfully finish the assembly. Always read all the instructions. <laughs> I'll have to, I'll have to do Man, I get like so excited you, when I'm building stuff, right? Like read this first sentence. I'm like, yeah, 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 I get it. And then I do something wrong and I'm like, oh crap. There was, there was another sentence. So I will do my best. 
You know, it's it's funny, and it's like the bane of support's existence. A lot of the time is like we we're all makers, and we've all like, oh, you know, I, I like I built IKEA furniture without uh -huh. the instructions. Like I can do it, no problem, right? And then it's like some little detail. Yep. Uh, and it just takes missing like one thing, and then you have to take it all apart, or you just like don't have a bolt somewhere, or you know, whatever. So, yeah, yep. slow down. The, am the amount of things I've done that are you know, user error, I mean, it's almost all, I, I think I make the joke on stream some time where like, it's almost always user error. I screw up things all the freaking time. So, um, we are Part going to be, fun. yeah, we are going to be doing our Polymaker Spool giveaway, uh, in about an hour, I will open the, uh, form for that. And then 30 minutes after that, we'll do the drawing like we typically do. So for anyone wondering, we will still be doing that. Also, if you have not smack the like button, let's see, let's start with it. Let's see if we can get it to hundred likes to start off with. Smash okay. it, smash it. Smash it. Okay, so frame assembly. I've got the big guy out. I know there was another box that had the extrusion, so let's start with that. I'm just making some tea real quick, by the way, so I didn't, okay. I didn't leave you, dude. You can hear me, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, are you generally tea over coffee, or it just depends? So I've been trying to cut down on the, uh, the caffeine because like I'd been overdoing it. I was like drinking like a pot <laughs> like a oh, day, geez. which was like way too That's, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, so I do both, I do both. Okay. And, uh, but I try to do like one cup in the morning and then, you know, my, my nicotine patch is my like kind of tea during the day. I love a warm cup of something, especially as we're like in a little bit colder, but we're starting to get into the spring and. Yeah, so. no, tea, tea is, I, I'm a big fan of like iced tea, even not, it doesn't have to have heavy amounts of sugar, but I like iced tea a lot. Um, I like my, growing up, my mom had a friend that was, um, Dutch and she would go visit family in Holland and bring back a couple boxes of their, this tea, this, I, I don't know exactly what it is. Dude, I, yeah. I haven't found anything locally that even comes close to this tea that I had growing up. But yeah, I, I, um, because of how caffeine affects me like crazy. And so I usually try to only have caffeine when I really need it. But today's the first cup I've had in like two and a half weeks. So I'm like, I'm like, all right, let's, let's try not to get too, uh, you know, too crazy. But I just, it hits, it hits, Aaron can drink it like it's water. And I'm like I, over here just shaking at my core. Like what's happening? My, my dad can like drink it before bed and it's like, it doesn't affect his sleep. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. No like way, if I have man. it like late in the afternoon, I'll just like, I can't sleep. Yeah. So. Every once in a while, I'll, I've done like a seven o'clock because I sometimes I'm up pretty late working on video stuff. And every once in a while, I've done like a seven o'clock or if I need to power through a script. But sometimes the decline doesn't happen after and I'm laying in bed, you know, and I'm like, man, I, I shouldn't have, you know, better. So, yeah. OK, yeah. so we've got it looks like for the first step, we need our printer frame, which we've got the big one. All the these are 20. No, these are 30. OK, 30, 30. These, um, and then M5 by 16s is the only screw we're using for all of this. So let's let's dump out M5 16s. Cool. And it, so we'll get going with this. Uh, Fabrico, love Nanner sandwiches with coffee. Oh gosh, I have you ever had a what, what the heck was it? It was um <laughs> it was bananas and it was he'll he'll say it was some kind of like a like a sweet mayo almost is how I would describe it. Um, sweet mayo, huh? Hmm. It's not, it's not, it's not sweet mayo. He'll, he'll say in chat, I can't think of what it was, but he, he had talked about it and Steve and I ended up eating it on stream during our, our, um, oh gosh, the VZBot build. And I couldn't do it. Steve, Steve took some really good bites out of it. I was impressed, but <laughs> something, something about like, I kept thinking about mayo the whole time I was biting into it and I just wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me. Um, also, Doom, thank you for becoming a member. It looks like, I think you were a member. I think it was a renewal. Uh, Dutch Teal. I wanna know what that is. That sounds wild. Yeah, it's, oh, Miracle Whip, dude. Miracle Whip? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Isn't that, isn't that like, like a somewhat like a marshmallow cream meets, I don't know what that is. What is Miracle yeah, Whip? It's meets uh, mayonnaise? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a trip. It's definitely, uh, I mean, again, different strokes for different folks, but I, I just, I couldn't get, I couldn't get down with it. Um, take the longer extrusions and place them next to the frame. Make sure the engraved Prusa logo is facing the front, yes. Um, ensure using the correct holes closer to the center of the frame. Tighten the screws fully, but in a diagonal pattern. Okay, cool. So we're doing, um, we're doing like this. I'm also gonna bring you guys 
I'm trying to balance between the pooch cam, the stream cam, and the chat. So let me see if I make pooch a little bit smaller here. Yeah, I don't need to be, I don't need to be that big, especially I like while you're being able up. to see. I like being able to see what you're doing though, man. <laughs> like I know Pooch is up to something interesting over there. I'm just taking uh, a nap right now, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, banana Miracle Whip, fluff, peanut butter and Miracle Whip. It's like a tangy mayo, I don't know. Wild. Yeah, I would I would say it's basically like mayo. That's the vibe I got, was mayo, like a, like a, um, like a uh, sweet mayo, so. Okay, so this is going, again, closer to the center. And then we're just tightening things in fully. Okay, so let's grab, let's grab the correct driver. Checking on you here. I wish you could hear the music I had playing, Pooch, because it's pretty, I, it's pretty mellow. It sounds chill. I feel like I can kind of okay. hear it. So this yeah. doesn't sit flush, which I think is because Am I wrong or no? It doesn't sit. The 3030 is kind of elevated, and I think it's because. Let me see. Let me use my chin to hold this in place really quick here. It is very good noticing, and there is a reason for it. Yes. Do you use your chin when it's assembling this, or what? What's the? I use uh, any by any means necessary. Okay. okay. When you're assembling anything, regardless, yeah. like you know, okay. if I gotta yeah. throw an armpit, like put it in a headlock. <laughs> yeah. I'm very. The chin does. I feel like the chin is an underutilized. <laughs> I don't do a whole lot with it normally, so it's kind of nice. Like you know, it's it's moment to shine here. Yeah. I was joking with Steve, I think, on stream like uh, a while back, where it's like, you know. We think about it, I'm like, oh man, it'd be so great to just have a third arm right now. But then if oh. we had a third arm, we'd be like wishing we had a fourth arm and a fifth yeah, arm. Because no... it's just, you're just trying to juggle <laughs> too much, right? Yeah. It's similar to happy. space. I was just talking with someone about space and like, there's so much more space here than I've ever had. And I already feel sort of like, you know, it'd be nice. If there were... It's one of those things where I think it doesn't matter how much space you got. It's using the most out of your space. And as, as like humans, we just... If we have more space, we fill it with stuff. And so it's it's kind of one of those things where, yeah. you know, there's never enough and you just kind of got to make do with what you got. Oh, 100%. I always say like your stuff is like a gas. It expands to fill, uh, fill the space that you have available, yep. right? So that's yep. just the way it goes. Tri uh, tripod says I would like some extra limbs. Only tripod. <laughs> Only tripod. Is well, for, for, let's do a, uh, I've got to put a sound. We're just, we're just taunting tripod. Poor tripod. Let's go with um, a Hadouken. No, we, love, we love tripod's garage, man. Oh, it's so good to have you here, buddy. Yeah, I got to see him at LBX too. Both of you guys, yeah. So this I is know, the LBX I crew. I know, I know. Yeah, man, we had a, we had a good old time at LBX. So for anybody that doesn't know what LBX is, that's the Light Burn Expo. And, uh, we, you know, being makers, we're into all kinds of tools, right? Not just 3D printing, but lasering. Uh, I love lasering stuff. Yeah, it's cool how much lasering you've done with uh, with RepCord. I actually, this this Saturday's video is on me using lasers, not 3D printers, to basically make a, a router template so that way I could cut out a pocket in the vinyl fence that I've been installing in the backyard. So I'm, I'm, I've always loved multiple technologies. The biggest issue is, is like, a 3D printer is a lot easier to have in an apartment than things like lasers and CNCs. And so now that I've got oh, for a sure. garage and I can, you know, sort of exhaust things, I'm like, I get to start playing around more so with these other sort of maker technologies. But yeah, I know you've you've got quite the laser facility. Um, I've got I've got uh, three different lasers. One's a big old four by eight, four foot by eight foot like flatbed where we can do just like massive or we can do a bunch up. And I mean. Like, it it's it's really cool. I don't know. You you bring up a good point though. I think part of the reason three D printing is blown up as a tool so much, like, is because it's just probably one of the best tools out there for like uh, accessibility. Like, yep. you can have it in your house. Um, you can get a really good result, and you can use it. It's just like a great little Swiss Army knife tool where you can. It's probably not the best tool for everything, but sure. it's it's quick and accessible and easy. Uh, and and affordable. It know? does a lot of things quite well. Um, and, right. and the, I mean, there's other, like, so with lasering, I mean, for example, the parts that I cut out, I had to post process it a bit because the edges had some char I wanted to get rid of. And yep. like, um, we're so spoiled. I mean, slicers 
and the ability to sort of input your parameters and have it automate versus something like a CNC where you're, you know, you're having to really specify tool paths and stuff. Like it's just, there's more involved and I can see how it's tougher. Not that it will never get to the point where there is a sort of enter some base parameters and it, you know, whatever AI slash algorithm generates the most optimized tool path. From what right. I've seen, it's not there yet. Like you've really got to be paying more attention when you're, you know, when you're playing around with, with those other technologies. hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, the stakes are a lot higher. Um, you know, it's, it's a more expensive piece of equipment. Uh, it's a lot easier to set fire to things yes. <laughs> than, than yes. with a 3d printer. Um, and it's easier to crash it and break it if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, same, same with CNC, right? It's like, you can yeah. do some really rad stuff with CNC, but man, like you can screw I mean, how many quick. people out there, you, you crash a tool head and you're out, you know, a couple hundred bucks for a tool. If you're lucky, if it's a cheap tool, I mean, some of these expensive CNC mills and or stuff more. Yeah. 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 So with 3d, so, yeah. I mean, typically the worst case scenario is like, you've got a hot end flood, which does suck. But I mean, a lot of times you can salvage you know, some of the parts. Yeah. And so you're, you know, maybe out, I don't know, 20 bucks for a thermistor and a, and a silicone sock and a, and sure. a heater cartridge. And the, the okay. safety's come a lot, a lot longer, you know, in the earlier days, like, yes, it is possible to create a fire. Um, it's a lot harder. I don't, I don't want to jinx it. Like, you know, it needs to be <laughs> yeah, responsible. Yeah, don't put anyone up to it. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there are ways, but uh, from a safety standpoint, you know, the technology has just continued to improve and improve. And um, the firmware has got a lot of yeah. stuff that really helps out with that. You know, just if same, it, same default. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah for mm -hmm. sure. Yep. Um, I might have a few pew pews. Yeah, uh, tripods, definitely lasers. Um, I would like to have four arms. I promise I would not want more. Too expensive for shirts. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you could trade daniel if you could trade uh uh like a leg for like an arm would you go like would you go with a third arm over uh, another leg or would you like to have more legs like what if I, you can pay for appendages around i don't know i don't is it temporary <laughs> or is it a one time like no you know that, uh, there's there's uh <laughs> some other things i gotta consider there yeah i don't Let's know see. walking around is yeah i don't hmm, i don't know what do you think, Tripod? Would you take a third arm over your second leg? He's he's been operating pretty pretty well with just his one. Yeah, no kidding. He's a good dude, um, but we know we know him well. This is yeah not, yeah this, oh this yeah. Is, John this is John, not ripping. John's the man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. John is awesome. I uh, hope to see you at Rocky Mountain. Yeah, we will definitely see you, uh, Liz. I'm excited to meet you in person there. Um, Pooch and Liz, hey Liz. Man. Liz is awesome. People, you're gonna love meeting Liz. Zombies here. Uh, zombies here too. Uh, Rocky Mountain River will be bananas. Yeah, I'm looking for. I was just talking about uh, a little bit ago your bananas. your Mark IV that you printed in ASA parts. Yeah, his yeah, ears so were burning. Like, yeah, uh, it looks like where short extrusions must be placed on the side with the head. Yeah, okay, so opposite end screws are inserted from the opposite side of the frame. Ensure you're using the correct holes. Same, uh, and then diagonal pattern. So it's the same thing. Holy crap, Steve! Thank you very much for the. 20 Look gifted memberships. Oh my gosh. Uh, what a dude. Let's, um, let's see, I got some cool sound effects. Okay, Steve gets the squirrel sound effect because it's, <laughs> me and Steve can relate on that. And then uh, we'll, do a, we'll do a cheer. Thank you very much for the support, Steve. Yeah, hey, it's wait, be what, a what tools zoo. are you using there, uh, Mr. Modbot? For sounds or what? No, 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 no. Just uh, like, your, you know, your hand tools. Because I like love these Bondus ball drivers for stuff. Oh, but I didn't I see what you had. You were rocking there. Yeah, it's, so uh, these are, tiny. so I do use the Bondus. I'm a big fan of them. But uh, these are my, like, the cream of the crop for Allen keys for me. The Weras. Yeah, I, I love them. The, the ball head on one side. And it's got sort of their, like, proprietary pattern that gives more bite onto the, so, like, less, more, more, yeah, more bite, less stripping of the screws. So, yeah. It's a dude, it's a buy once, cry once, man. When I got hired on to um, Lifer a couple years ago, I had a coworker that was like, yeah, you gotta get these. And I've been using Allen keys forever, right? Building 3D printers. And I always just use whatever came with the printer. And I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. And so I think I waited for my birthday and was like, screw it, I'm buying them. And, and I mean, I've used them so much and I've had them two and a half years and they're as good as the day I bought them. I, I think they're absolutely, I, I think they're absolutely worth it. Um, some tools I, I think you can get away with and you don't need it, but yeah, these are just so, they're fantastic, man. I, if you get them and don't like them, don't tell me because that's how strongly I feel about them. Like it'll, it'll, it'll make me, it'll make me sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely.
big big fan of them so um i saw i saw ballistic sorry you had asked earlier because um there was ballistic does uh quite a bit of streaming as well and there's been some issues with copyright claims on music and uh no i am still using stream beats um i haven't knock on wood had issues the last few streams and the streams i have have only had one song get claimed and so i just removed like that two minutes of the of the stream so now i never swapped to something else yet uh, it's such a pain. I, I, I pay for, I do pay for that. Um, I, I should use it more, man. It's a really good platform. Maybe I need to, I might need to do that then. Yeah, I might need to do that then. Um, XR, thank you very much for the 10 gifted membership. It's gonna be all green in uh, in chat from the members. We'll do a Hadouken, and then we've got a, uh, I, wonder I wonder what's, what's for dinner. For dinner. <laughs> all right, standard. Okay. Holy crap, <laughs> PF, PF with Look another 10 memberships, man. I <laughs> Look at all these members zombie, you've got. Zombie now, with the banana. Let's do, uh, let's see. Okay, we gotta go with some sound effects. You'll do the pizza time. The army grows. Here. Thank you very much. Thank you, PF. Yeah, PF has been supporting channel for a long time. Thank you very much. Figured I had uh, to log in to like it. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Tripods, <laughs> a $10 donation. I was asked shortly after my amputation if I would have preferred arm, arm amputation. I said that I would take the leg loss over the arm any day. Sucks for mobility, but I would rather have two arms. So there's your answer, Pooch. Well, I guess that's, yeah, I, I could see, I mean, I feel like you are able to do a lot more having both of your hands, especially for the stuff you do, all the building and yeah. machinery and stuff like that. So I can definitely see that. Wait, I got rid of Pooch. Uh, host side, there's Pooch. I'm okay. here, I'm here. Still with you. Okay, tightening this down. I'm trying to get caught up. I know I'm I'm not. I appreciate you stalling to. No, 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 man. <laughs> this is get, great. Let me get caught up. The, every time, I mean, we've spent two point, yeah, two two and a quarter years that we've been streaming on this channel pretty much weekly, and I always have like these sort of ambitious goals of what we'll accomplish each stream, and like you think. <laughs> You'd think I know now that it's just not realistic, but I still set the bar so high. Um, and I think that, I think the chat really like, uh, their goal is to not let me, <laughs> not have me reach that. Like that's, that is the ultimate goal is how, how far can we derail this? Uh, this I love goal it. Here? Yeah. You know what? I would take that any day, like having friends show up and try oh, and just chat so and distract fun. me. Yeah, the whole point, I mean, the, the reason why I started initially even streaming after like trying streaming at one point and giving up on it was I had quite a few people reaching out on the videos that were fairly new people in 3D printing that were sort of frustrated saying like, man, I'm like pretty discouraged. I've been trying to print and think, you know, I'm having first layer issues, I'm having quality issues. And I watch your videos and the prints turn out like really nice. And it was like in that moment where I'm like, this is an edited video. Like it does, all the things don't make the cut. And so, so a big part of it was I wanted to show people that I screw up all the time and it's perfectly fine and we troubleshoot through it and we'll figure it yeah. out. So yeah. it's been, it's been fun showing. I mean, also frustrating. Chat's gotten to see me a few times where I'm just like, not quite pulling my hair out, but I'm just like, what in the world is going on here? Um, but I enjoy the, I enjoy working through problems in real time with, with, um, I, I love streaming, man. I think that's great. I mean, I think people want to see what, what what it's really like, like yeah. how the sausage is made, you know, yeah. and and just get to hang out and like, you know, and it's great too because it's like you don't have to do it all at once. You know, Steve and I have done a couple sessions where we built that yeah. trident and, um, you know, I just like, it's just great. It's, it's just, just good. Time, I, like, I always feel energized after. I'm like, it's it's a good interaction with people. Um, I love and... having it on Wednesdays. It's a nice like for hump day to break up the week and like so I work you know I work full time at Lifeburn but my days off are Wednesdays and Sundays because I was streaming prior to working there and I wanted to maintain this sort of streaming cadence and I, I love it. It's such a nice just break from the regular week to hang out with everyone, work on a project and you know talk about food, crack some jokes and, and just see where see where things go. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, just Andrew, uh, just thank you go ahead, for sorry. the donation. Uh, did somebody ask for a derailment? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, 
I'm just I'm just organizing some stuff because this is I'm I'm this is gonna be interesting for me because like I said I've been doing the upgrade kit. There the process is effectively the same once you get to the frame uh, component. Uh huh. But I'm taking the opportunity while you're doing that to just like take inventory of my stuff. Cool. And just as a note, if you guys are into doing the upgrade, there are um, a couple of different options for you. Uh, you mentioned Daniel mentioned at the top that there's a there's a three five, there's a three nine, and there's a four kit, and they're you know increasing in price and complexity and what's right for you may be uh, different. Um, I uh, I'm gonna actually do a stream I think of the three five upgrade because it's a it's the cheapest easiest and the firmware just got updated so that it supports Revo now which I'm super excited about because all my Mark threes have Revos on them. Nice. Uh, speaking of Revo too, the price just yeah. went down across the board, which is pretty freaking. I cool. know. Yeah, I know. It's super cool. I plan on covering that. I've, I've been meaning to. I, I've had Revo and I've used Revo in a few printers for years, but I never made a video when it first came out, and I'm like. Now that the, the catalog is so mature and the price is dropped, I'm like, man, I feel like I need to like really give my opinion on the on the uh, ecosystem that they have over there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, have you gotten have you gotten a chance to play with it much? Like, do you? Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my Mercury 1.1 is running it. The LDO Voron 2.4 is running it, and I think mm -hmm, I have it on mm -hmm. one other printer somewhere. Um, I I primarily ran just the standard you know, brass nozzles and then the, or whatever we're calling them. I call them nozzles. I know they're nozzle heat break combination. Um, and the then snoob. I've used, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I've used the um, uh, obsidian uh, quite a bit. I have the mm -hmm. high flow uh, and I've played them a little, but I plan on as part of the video, sort of seeing how I can push them since they've, they, they I think as far as I'm aware, they licensed the CHT patent or whatever. So that way E3D is mm -hmm. able to sort of, you know, use mm -hmm. that technology in their, in their setup. So. Yeah, I'll, t I'll tell you something. Steve and I put one of the things we did a couple of weeks ago when he came out and we we took the Trident and we threw a 1.2 um, millimeter nozzle high uh -huh. flip on that thing. And insane. it was <laughs> blasting through <laughs> filament. Like it was it's wild. Insane. Yeah, yeah. I like, almost wonder... Had, I mean, we were doing like a full volume build and it like took like an hour. I mean, it was a, we did a vase mode, but it was still yeah. just like fog and filament and it was really wild to watch that thing work. Quick question for you, Pooch. I know that um, the nozzles that the next shooter uses are, they're not Revo, but they're like sort of an integrated nozzle heat break type setup for quick swaps. Um, two questions, I guess. One, is there some kind of a high flow variant or, or no? Is it just the, like the standard? And two, I assume there's different sizes. Cause I'm just thinking, I got to print out a bunch of- Yes, got yes five... and yes. Okay, uh, there is a high flow not, variant. Okay, not a high flow yet. Okay. Okay, but you can see what's going So for, first of all, it's, it's well known at this point that E3D actually manufactures uh, a lot of the snoobs uh, for yep. the, the um, th that's what they're calling it. The integrated nozzle with the heat break stainless steel tube they and stuff in they, they call it a snoob that's what e3d <laughs> likes to call it i think it's yeah it's fun i think yeah i don't know if it's a, an official name or not yeah, they, like they, nipple nozzles <laughs> yeah, yeah like nipple nozzles right right <laughs> yeah we're just innovating all kinds of names so yep. I, I get no royalty for that either sure I feel like yeah you should off. of course <laughs> um but uh yeah so they they make those uh yes they come in different sizes yes there are obsidian variants of it uh it, it, I, I can't comment officially, but I would be very shocked if a high flow uh, didn't uh, exist at some point. Uh, I will tell you this, though, there is an adapter um, snoob that allows you to use the old V6 style nozzles with the Mark IV as well. So that lets you put a CHT gotcha. or yep, a high that's flow. What, don't be just yeah. commented that as well then. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so yeah. you do have the option to throw that on there. I'm totally. um, just waiting to get in your fire flower systems. It looked awesome. Yeah, that's sweet. Cause I, I was just thinking that I planned on I'm printing, so uh, I love my rep racks, but in this in this house up here, I decided to go with sort of a hybrid. It's not quite rep rack; it still uses conduit, but instead, it's built into a Billy book. Um, the Billy bookcase. Oh, uh, John! John's voice to te or text to voice just popped up, so it threw me off. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm so I'm using Billy bookcases with the conduit to sort of make. It's, it's, I, I don't know if RepRack was before it or after it, but it's, in, I think it's inspired by RepRack. And so I'm printing out all the parts in white PETG 
And mm -hmm. I originally was just gonna throw them at this as is, but I'm like, man, I should probably go with a larger nozzle because I need to print like, I, I have to I have to do the math again, but it's it's probably 60 to 80 of these brackets. Uh, so it's yeah. not gonna be a quick task. And so, and they're not, yeah. you know, the tolerances, it's literally some holes to drill it into the shelf and then uh, yeah. a pocket for the conduit. So it doesn't need to have high levels of tolerance, uh, you know, with it. So. I might, I might end up uh, fairly quickly after assembling this, swapping it over to something a little bit larger. Oh man, I highly recommend. You save a ton of time and then not just that, but then like, I think people really underestimate the, like the, the difference in strength of a part. Mm. Like, so pr strength is, it's been pretty well documented at this point by CNC Kitchen and a ton of other people that, you know, strength is derived from the perimeters generally of, of a 3D print, right? Yeah. Yep. And so when you're using a thicker nozzle and you're just laying down that thick ropey bead of filament, um, that that is making your part so much stronger. So for things like brackets and functional parts where you don't care about detail, you care about speed and strength, like it's 100% go. go with the bigger nozzle. Yeah. You'll save yourself a ton of time um, and it's just it's just better in in every way, and yeah, that's I'm part of the reason I did the that E3D upgrade. Or like these having this ability to swap nozzles quickly in a production environment is like so Huge. clutch, so clutch for uh for, for what I do mostly. Yeah, yeah. I I um it's funny because I remember when from Andrew Rogers. Did somebody ask for a derailment? so funny the text to voice is just coming through right now. Like Andrew Rogers is uh Andrew Rogers without Ness at the end, uh, came, came in right now as well. Um, I was going to say that when the, when the Revo first came out, I was like, yeah, well, I don't really swap nozzles that much, but it's because it's not part of my workflow. It, and it's because like every time you swap a nozzle, yes, you can make sure that you've got it. So it's torqued correctly, but like, there's always a risk that there's potentially going to be a leak between nozzle and heat break or block. And so the the ability to swap and know that the threads are in the cold zone in an area where you don't have to worry about that is a really enticing reason to experiment more and not have to have that fear of man am i going to swap and then screw something up you know right yeah uh, it's it's better for a number of reasons the other thing is like it, it, what you mentioned like the way that a meltdown can happen so when you when you integrate the heat break with it like worst case if you get a jam and in a production environment, I can just pull that whole nozzle out, deal with it on the workbench and just throw another one right in there and be up and running again right yep. away. Whereas on back in the V6 days where you had to like, you know, heat the block up, remove the thing, you risked like shearing the wires or shorting a wire or what, you know, whatever it was from the, the thermistor, breaking a thermistor wire. Um, you know, those days were all, all behind us for the most part. Um, yeah, you know, there are some there. It, it, I mean, it's not to say that it's not possible if you're not careful with what you're doing. You twist that that heat, uh, the heater core and stuff. Like, yeah, you can still break stuff, but it was a lot easier to break stuff in the Before, old days. With, yeah, with the older systems. It, they also heat up so much faster. Those heater cores, those little PTC cores that E3D uses, like you're not waiting for stuff to preheat as long. So you're printing fast because time is money in production yeah. environment as well. So again, I know that I'm not the typical user um but as we see more and more people doing print farming and things like that you know these are the little things that matter yeah no i i you you definitely abuse or not abuse but like use use the printers heavily i mean i, I imagine for a lot of them they're running pretty much around maybe not around the clock but like in, in waves i would think right yeah, it depends on what the job is, um, but uh, you realize pretty quickly that if you're if you're running production, it's so much cheaper these days to just throw more machines at the problem than to sure. like worry about speed. So like that's why when everybody was like, oh my gosh, like speed is like incredible. Like, well, it's nice. Yes, it can help, but if it's at the sake of reliability or other stuff, it's like so it just depends on the application. Um, and if I have the option to say spend. Um, you know, buy two machines for the price of like one or three for one, you know, like you're, you're going to get more speed by throwing more machines at the problem than you are getting a, a, a machine that's twice as fast, if that makes sense. Yeah, I was thinking about it the other night and I was like, if I had to categorize or like choose the order of priority, which would be speed, reliability and quality. Um, reliability is actually number one for me above all, and then it's quality and then it's speed. Um, I don't get like, I mean, I love being able to crank out a part faster. I really do. But 
it's not the most important. If it means I'm compromising on the part's integrity, if the part's not looking good, like if I can have all three of those things, sure, that's what I do like to have is speed, quality, and reliability. But it's definitely yeah. not at the it's not at the top of the totem pole if I had to if I had to organize them like that. Right. Right. Uh, that's an interesting thing. Like, uh, tell me in the chat, guys. Like, where where would you rank that? And it's gonna it's gonna vary for everybody depending on what their their situation is. You know, if you're just printing for funsies versus sure, yeah, for for, for, for like, a living. I can see like like um, uh, Vez or Simon, who's in like the VZBot project. His thing's fast. He's he's all about like fast call, like fast cars, fast. Like he he lives yeah. like I, and I fit you in, and he he gets his to print really nice and really reliably. Um, but also a huge part of it is like he enjoys the like tuning for speed like that's really what so it, it majorly depends on who you are and what your goal is out of out of the printer which is also why I like the technology so much is it's just not a one shoe fits all everyone's got such diverse applications and use cases for 3D printing. And I, and I think that's okay. I, honestly, I wish that got said more because you get into some of these toxic forums and everybody's like, oh, you're an idiot because you're choosing this over that or whatever. And it's like, <clears throat> it's so easy for everybody to just like get wrapped up in the world that they live in. Like, yeah, they, ju just because, um, you know, the, the industry might be tend tending more towards speed doesn't mean that there's not so many people that are still into the modding or, you know, whatever it is. And it's not, like you said, it's not one size fits all and that's okay. Yep. I think it would be a really boring if it was, I don't know that I would have stayed interested in this hobby as long as, or not hobby, but technology, if it was just like, this is it. And this is what, this is what everyone's using. And there's no, it, it's the, it's the, like, it's all of the, I had mentioned it to you when we talked about like the firmware stuff, the filament stuff, but like, it's just so many ways that you can tailor it to yeah. what you want. And I, I love that. Like, I really, I mean, the, the fact that there's, you know, I think a like hundred, people got hanging out here with us today the fact that there's 136 people hanging out here on wednesday i mean there's a lot of other people also enjoy the ins and outs and nitty-gritty and just the you know the hobby slash technology um and sort of all things that come along with it yeah yeah um ab absolutely i mean it's interesting like look at P pc building like i don't know if you like you did some pc building in your day wasn't that like the origin of your channel even no, not P it wasn't PC. It was, it was like, video game, like hacking and modding. It was mostly okay. Xbox 360s, like JTAGging, case uh, okay, modding, okay. stuff like that. Yep. Okay. So point being that like back in the day, like when, when PCs were first becoming a thing, it's like you kind of had, like before Dell existed, before Compaq existed, like we'd go down to like Fry's or even before Fry's, there'd be these like mom and pop computer shops. You buy your motherboard, you buy your processor, you buy your memory, you, you know, your, your frame and all that stuff. And you, you had to build. And... It, and it's similar to like what we're seeing with the 3D printing industry now, right? As we talk about going to appliance uh, state where yep. it just because more like the, the industry is growing and more and more people are going to care less about doing the build and more just like, I want to buy a machine that works. Doesn't mean that there's still not a huge population of people that are into modding, just like PC world. Like there are still people that want to build their own PCs in cases, yep. even though there's plenty of good options to buy a good off the rack thing. And that's I still, the evolution of all these things. I, I talked about this, so I just, um, I did an interview, like a written interview for, um, I think this article that's being worked on with 3D printing stuff. And I sort of described it as like, right now I look at my desktop and it's a MacBook. That's my primary rig for like work stuff. And then I look on the right. ground here on what I'm streaming on, and this is the PC that I built. I like both, there's a place for both. Like it, I, again, depending who you are, maybe for some there is not a place for both, but they both, serve a purpose and both fill whether it's a niche or a void so I, I just like with 3d printing like i like my apple but i also like the ability to rip out my gpu when i want to and upgrade it to something else you know if i see like that's something i want to do totally and if you have the luxury that that's why like again it depends on what you're doing like the reason that i bought the the prusa is a like way on and disclaimer guys if you don't know this i know it's not no official announcement but like i work for prusa um but I've been in 3D printing for much longer. So I've been working for Prusas for like a little over six months now. Um, but uh, I've been a fan of 3D printing since, you know, 2015. And I've built a ton of machines. I still have a lot of other non Prusa machines, but I picked those originally because of its like heritage as a workhorse, right? And I made it a point not to mod those things for a long time. I had my machines that I played with 
And then I had my machines that I made money with. And I didn't, I tried not to cross that barrier. So it was a big deal when I decided to go to Revo on the Mark III's because up until then, I was like, everything has to stay bone stock. Yeah. Um, because you don't want the things that you're, you know, that reliability piece was so important to me as well. Yeah, the, uh, oh, really quick here, I'm, <laughs> I get zoned out of chat for a bit here. Uh, hey, Jose, let's see, you still need the speed because uh, in products you produce much, wait, you still need the speed because in products you produce much bigger parts. I don't know what you mean. Um, I, I think that the, the the thing we were discussing was that, like speed's important, but you can also, another, another machine is always gonna be faster than, because it's also one of yep. those things where, I would rather have more machines because if I have a machine that's four times faster than, like let's say I have a machine that's four times faster than another machine and that machine goes down, that sucks because it's all your eggs in one basket versus exactly. four machines that are maybe a little bit slower or, or slower, but when one goes down, you still have 75% of your yield. And like, I, I, it's been a long time since I 3D printed for business, but when I was in college and I was 3D printing, I was selling things. And for me, it, it was it was really important to have more versus one uh, because of that reasoning. Again, if one went down, I'm like, ah, it's fine. I'm still able to fulfill these orders. But if my one good machine goes down, I'm screwed. Like there's nothing coming out of the factory, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, that's, I think that's exactly right. And again, it's, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I come from kind of, I'm not a prepper, but like, I've been prepper curious, right? So the notion of like, one is none, two is one, one is none. Uh -huh. um, so any any chance you have to have redundancy is obviously really important. And honestly, in a farm environment, like, you, you know, you're gonna have probably five, 10, 15, depends on the size of your operation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, at some point you start to realize like, it doesn't matter to me. Like even if this print went twice as fast, and that's the other thing, like what is that at the cost of? A lot of times we don't know, like how long is that, that uh, you know, X axis gonna last, like with the amount of vibration and speed. And like, we, we don't really have like data points on a lot of the, the high speed farms just yet, right? Like we're only yeah. starting to see people using uh, like a lot of these clipper based machines and stuff like that in, in an environment. And I'm really, really be interested to know what, um, what I mean, that there, looks there's like. There's gonna have to be more maintenance sooner. Like, I mean, uh, just, just like for, I also do enjoy printing like, usually like a, a happy medium. I, as much as every time I say I build a fast printer, I'm like, I'm gonna print super fast. I'm always like, oh, my poor baby. Like I'll print like two prints on it really quick. And I'm like, that's enough. And we'll go back to sort of this happy medium. Um, but it, it is going to be interesting to see long term what the sort of service service cadence yeah. slash replacement parts cadence is going to be compared to that of slow and steady because things do like I mean I, I know a few people that print fast really fast and even with Loctite like things are rattling man like like screws are falling out like screws are getting loose so there's yeah. certainly a trade off of of that when you're when you're pushing hardware to its absolute peak you know peak levels. Yeah, definitely. Or maximum levels, yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's see, yeah. I'll stick with Freezer Printers only. Tried many other brands before, and I hated tinkering with them all the time. So I freeze my printers, I just send the files, and they come out great every time. Yeah, I, I, get, I like, I've mentioned it before, but like, I like having both. I don't mind the tinkering, and I love the building, but when you want something, and your only printer or your printers are all not operational, like that's no fun. <laughs> that's when the tinkering is no oh. longer fun, when you need the part and the <laughs> printer's down and, and you've got to do some, you know, do some uh, tweaking stuff. Also, Maurice, I think asked me a little bit ago, um, if you had to choose fast and sometimes bad prints or slow and always good prints, what would you choose? I think that depends. Uh, I, need, I would need a metric of like how fast is fast versus slow. If we're talking it's 10 times faster and out of one in every 50 prints, their one fails and it's not a big deal, I'd probably go with fast. But if we're talking it's two and a half times quicker and it, it fails one out of every eight prints, then I'd, I'd go with the slower. So I, I need, like it's hard to answer that without having a bit more specifics between how fast and how slow and how how often things are screwing up it's it's funny because like the notion of what's fast and what's gonna be fast in five years time too like i i don't know it's 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 hard to see that far ahead because just fundamentally we look at like i feel like we're at the limits of how fast you can actually <laughs> like melt plastic and just uh -huh. like run it down 
But um, wouldn't you have said that years ago, Pooch? If you went back years ago, there's no way you'd have thought we'd hit to where we're at today. The, the evolution of like the yeah. CHT nozzle, who thought that if you split the geometry uh, into three, that you'd be able to get such a bump in flow? And who thought like, you know, like there's machines now with like CPAP cooling. I mean, some of this stuff is crazy, man. Like I, I never would have imagined yeah. in a million years that this would, would, like input shaping, like what you can, you can counter the, you know, vibrate. Like it just, it's nuts, dude. <laughs> so it, it, it is, it is. And I'm not saying that it won't continue to see improvement, but like when you look at what 3D printing and the tech that gets us to the next level, yeah. you know, the things that, that they are less sexy to talk about, but I always say like the material science, like the, the coming up with polymers that can be melted faster so that we can print faster you know yep. like the things that are actually going to like kind of unlock the next level um may not be just like just pure speed on the machine uh sure. you're right like i think the cht was huge like that that yeah. realization that like if i just you know split this thing into three like i can melt it a lot faster well, so, prior to that the answer was just more heat block more nozzle length right. like it was big, I mean, bigger it's all we were doing zone. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember when uh, when E3D released the Super Volcano, and I'm like, oh my god, this thing the is brute huge. force approach that. Oh, that felt dude. Like, right? Yeah, I, I really wanted, when it came out, uh, I really wanted to build a printer to sort of handle it. It just never happened, but I was just so, I remember holding it, because I, I worked at Matter Hackers at the time, and I remember when they came in, I got to hold the block and the nozzle, and I'm just like, oh my god, this is insane. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, who knows, like, it, it may get faster, like, it, it may, you know, I suspect that the 3D printing that we see maybe in 10 years time, I don't know, I'm not gonna say five years time, is yeah. is gonna probably, I don't I don't know, like I think FDM is gonna be around for a while. Yeah, sure. But I think like this, you know, the things for like speed, like I think we're gonna see, I, I hope, I hope we're gonna see advances in, in maybe uh, UV resin curing or something like where the toxicity yep. come down, where the, the curing process isn't as big of a deal, the wash and stuff. Um, or even just like other things where it's like holographic, you know, where it just takes seconds to basically like, you know, like that's going to get us to more of the Star Trek replicator space. I think, yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, I definitely would love to see advancements in other, um, sectors as well. And I do think that as much as I, you know, again, would have said that I don't think we could have hit where we're at now a few years ago, I do think that the improvements we begin to see from here on out are gonna be marginal in comparison. I, I just, I think there'll be small, like incremental improvements versus like, you know, throw input shaping on and all of a sudden you're blasting, you know, your, your same hardware is able to make much prettier prints at, at faster speeds. I got a question for you. Um, mm. Generally when you're working on these, so like I just assembled the extrusions uh, and the front and back plate in the air, um, and I did tighten them, you know, diagonally. But if I yeah. if I if I go on the front right and the back left, there's some wiggle on this quartz. Do you typically assemble it perfectly flat on a hard surface like this, or no? You just yes, for the okay. reason that you're just illustrating okay. right okay. there. So, so but, loosen, but I yep. what I do is I do it in the air like you're talking about, but I leave it loose and then I sure. snug it. Okay. You know, as Steve yep. likes to say, you throw your Ugga Duggas in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so let me, let me loosen these guys. Do you do it with just the, um, well, yeah, you can't really do it with the, uh, one second here. I wish I had, as much as I like these Bondus drivers, um, they, the ball end does not do a great job when things get tightened. So let me start by loosening these. Where are the other? Let's see here. Taking a little inventory while you're doing that. Yeah. Some also, let me see. Let me see. Do we have any particular goal today, by the way, or are we, or are we just gonna be like, there's no point to setting a goal because then we're gonna disappoint ourselves? Well, it depends. Um, if we're doing the hard cutoff. Um, I don't, I honestly haven't looked that far. I looked at the general overview of the assembly and I have built the MK3S Plus. I remember it looked like a big, like a meaty part of the assembly comes down to the tool head. Like that's a big, right? A big yeah, the, portion the of next, it. The next extruder is a good chunk of it. I think they did a good job breaking the thing into chunks. So I don't know where you're, you're on the frame assembly, I'm assuming Oops. right now. Yeah. And, yep. and I don't know what step you're on in there but i'm looking at it and i'm guessing you're somewhere around 20. maybe no no you're not quite to the box assembly you are probably 
Uh, we haven't gotten to PSU. I'm so we're at I'm finishing step nine. Okay, yeah. So we'll get around to cable clips and some other stuff. Great. Um, so, you know, this and then, and then after this is X axis. So, you know, that's a good amount right there. I would yeah. say just if you're, if you're not familiar with the process, they say like allocate, you know, six to eight hours. Like if you're, I mean, if you're one of the kind of people that are really focused and hum humming along, like you could probably do it in four to five. Yeah. Um, but I think they, they tell you there, there's little time estimates, uh, at the top of each of these little steps along the way. And we're talking and we're snacking. Oh yeah. No, I, <laughs> The amount, the, the speed that I'm typically able to accomplish something off camera is, is substantially faster, but then it's not fun, right? It's not, it's not, it's not nearly right. as fun. So, well, yeah, I, so that's the plight of the content creator, right? Like it's yep. just, uh, it takes you twice as long or three times as long to like have to record and document as it does to just make the thing. Yeah. Plus everyone here knows that like I, I generally speaking because of all the derailing, I'm not, if you're looking for a speed builder, you've come to the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> You know who's always impressed me in that arena is um, Joe Kasha, uh, the 3D maker noob. Oh. That guy is so good at like talking and working at the same time. Like I, I, I don't, do I don't think I've I ever seen it. anybody that is as efficient as he is at he doing a stream. He won the Milo, dude. Done. He freaking won. I know. The... <laughs> it's insane, man. I know. There's no way. There's no way I could do that. I mean, that was a long day. But... Sure, but still, regardless. Like, did you did you do Milo? Did. Do you have a Milo yet? Uh, it's 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 in the queue. So we'll be building oh. a Milo after Rocky Mountain. Yeah, I've got the filament for it here. Steve's supposed to send me over a couple STL changes that he made to a few of the parts. So I'm gonna print out some of those things, and then uh, mm -hmm, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. looking looking forward to looking forward to playing around with it. Yeah, I'm gonna be watching intently on that one because I really don't like CNC. I've said like this is gonna be my year to like level up with some CNC. Oh yeah, um, do, you, do you have one in the shop or no? No, no, okay. I, my, so I'm a little bit spoiled because my next door neighbor is a cabinet maker and he's got like a SCM industrial, you know, and so he's made a ton of stuff. Like I've designed for it and then I'll bring it next door and then he's hogged out parts for it. Gotcha, um, so you have access to the tech at least, but just I have, not I have access to it, yeah. and, but, but like given the amount of space and like, um, a quick, I guess it depends if we're talking about like a CNC router versus like a mill, but like the Milo is interesting. Like I would love, I mean, you've seen, I've done like the belt printer mods. Yeah, and oh like, yeah. To yeah, be yeah. able to like do some basic, like I don't need to be able to like crank parts, but to be able to like get some aluminum. Like aluminum, prototyping type stuff? Like, just prototyping. Yeah. Like just to like learn the tech and understand it and and that would be cool and then i also like spent uh about a month and a half ago i was down at um carbide 3d oh like cool. I, eyeball yep. in the the shape poco um, yep. hanging out with my my buddy winston and oh man i was like i gotta get one of these but they're like right on the verge of like launching like the the perfect mix of what i think would work well for what i want gotcha where the, I, the vfd spindle and put it on their pro line they're they're that five seems, that seems much better but yeah i mean like the, here's the thing it's like you got to have we talk about laser cutting like part of the reason laser cutting like co i'm talking co2 like diode has become more accessible right but sure. if you want to get high power industrial laser cutting the amount of like support equipment you need you like you need a chiller you need a good compressor you need like good um you know, vac system for like evacuating the air and stuff like yep. that. And so it's not just the machine, but it's like all the things. And same thing with CNC, like you want good chip dust management. Dust extraction, yeah. Dust yeah. Extraction. Yep. So, you know, 3D printing for the most part, like we're, I think we're gonna see more of that actually come in, in these coming years, like more air filtration. Um, I think water cooling, I think we're gonna, I know it's been around, but I think we're gonna see a more water cooling yeah, as we start to see high like temp applications, it, I see yeah. it like it yeah. enclosure. Well, like as that becomes more uh, common, right? Because like even using like a, a bamboo and like the fact that you have to like leave the door open if you're if you're printing PLA or, or I wait, don't, and I've never had issues, but I, I've uh, seen it. Like I've I yeah, have on some, a lot of them recommend it, man. Like it's it's yeah. depending on what filament you're printing with, how long you're yeah. printing. Like it can certainly encourage heat creep. I don't ever though. I, I still leave it closed and it's been fine, but. I have used other machines similarly where, you know, there's the big sticker, remove top cover, remove, you know, open front or whatever. Yeah. And if you yeah. don't, it, it can lead to under extrusion from partial clogs just to the filament softening prematurely. So I had that problem on my Rays, uh, a couple of my Rays oh, E2s yep. and yep. stuff. Oh, like, dude, 
Ray, yeah. yeah the, even the Pro yeah. Twos, I remember because yep. I used to yep. sell them. I, I and the people say I'm having issues. I say pop your lid off. I said there's a you can print little STLs to lift it or just take the thing off if you're printing right. the PLA. So right. yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, that's that's a thing that, like I said, as we start to see more heated, uh, more enclosed machines, more heated, like even if it's not a heated chamber, um, the, the reason water cooling is like, if you can bring that radiator, if you can pull that heat outside and not have to worry about the ambient temperature to keep that, that uh, the heat break cooled, like that's gonna change a lot of stuff. So I think we're gonna see like some quality of life things and, and a lot of those, we're gonna see a lot more industrial design, more like uh, reach toward appliance, um, more uh, ability to use like all kinds of different polymers. And I got to tell you, man, I don't know how much enclosure you've, I mean, you do a lot of like uh, Voron stuff. Yeah, but, like, a, lot, a lot of ABS, ASA, carbon nylon, I, P, PCs where I sort of haven't, I've done a tiny bit, but I haven't explored heavily PC enough just because- just closing, like the quality, like can you, I, it blew my mind. Like I didn't think it was going to be as big of a deal, but even like for PLA, PETG, when I look at the quality of the parts that I'm pulling out of just the stuff that I haven't closed, and then I'm realizing like, just those little drafts, those little temperature changes throughout the day, like when you're walking by and like, those little things can just like create a little bit of lift, which is gonna affect, you know, a corner, it's gonna create surface quality issues. Oh, you're saying you're saying the, the benefits of having a controlled environment. Controlling is, 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 those yeah. thermals yeah. is yep. so key to getting yep. good results. No, I, I 100%. So I think we're I mean, gonna see less and less of this open frame stuff and then a lot more air filtration systems because I think we're still, you know, a lot of data is not out on like, what's the particulate area? Like, I'll tell you this, like PLA, like I get like, it triggers my sinuses. Like when it's, I'm printing out in the open, like I can tell, uh, part of the reason I love PETG so much is it's like, it doesn't bother me in the same way. And it's just, it's just like that allergic slight, like yep. thing that I've noticed. Same thing, obviously ABS, ASA, like that stuff you definitely don't want to do out in the open. Yeah. The, um, I was just talking about this yesterday, actually, and when I was working at Matter, I mean, I talked to so many people. There was one guy that called in, and he was like allergic to PLA. He he was he had purchased PLA and was having like he was not doing. Uh, oh, did you go to sleep? Your monitor? Uh, it it just came back. So the the secondary camera I have like has this stupid thirty minute like turn off, and I can't disable it. I, I hate that about that camera. Gotcha. Okay. So I just I just give it a little tap when it. Are these, I mean, these uh, anti-vibration feet, are they in the printed parts or no? Nope. Anti-vibration feet are... Um, off cable clips too aren't in there as well? Cable clips are included. Those are actually injection molded. Okay. So it must be in this... must be in here. They this should be... Here. There should be a bag that says frame and that'll have your cable clips. x carriage. They're pretty good uh, about the... X-axis, buddy. Why am I not seeing it? I'm sure it's me. Uh, isopropyl alcohol, uh, filament, lube. Okay. Oh, frame, frame. Uh, yep, yep. This is it. Also, music looks like it stopped. Let's change that. People need their tunes, dude. Come on. I know. I always switch it. So we start off slow, and then we ch change it up to like it's kind of like eight bit. Um, Oh, I see. You're building. Actually, you're building energy. Yeah, dude. I, I gotta start off slow. We gotta like, you know, and then the, usually the coffee kicks in. Let's see. I probably have an ERCF two before you. Zombies. Oh yeah, you will definitely have a ERCF before me. I think zombie. Uh, who squirrels more, modbot or zombie? I feel like zombie does a pretty good job. I know he gets on his like sort of tangents as well. I've, I've gone. He also streams late. At late, I would also probably be going on more tangents at night. My. Like, I get uh, punchy. You get punchy yeah. when you're like tired and like, uh, or, or do you feel like you're more awake then? I don't know what do you do. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I um, it depends. Things have changed ever since. Ever since having a kid, dude. Like I, I used to be <laughs> a vampire and I love nights. And now it's like, dude, eleven o'clock. I better get to bed before he's, uh, you know, it's, it's sleep when he's asleep type thing. You know. Oh yeah. Oh, dude. This is. So I have three kids. And uh, I gotta tell you, they're they're a lot older now, but um, but yeah, that like learning how to life hack around your family life is like so so critical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a must, especially 100% working from home. You know, between light burn during the day and then video stuff in the afternoon, evening, night. Like it's just the second Jack's down for a sleep at seven, while Aaron Aaron usually works some more nights. I'm like. Yeah, you know, baby monitors up here on the on the desk, and I'm just cranking out editing or scripting or whatever. It's just it, I used to be able to just sort of like, you know, whenever I felt like it, 
Now it's like, if I've got a window, dude, I've got to take advantage of it because that window is not, um, it's not lasting, so. Yeah, and then you, as soon as you figure it out, they'll flip the script on you. Like they're, Yeah, they're... that's what I keep hearing, which we've already, ex in the first year, we've sort of already experienced some of that, but I, I do keep hearing as well that it's like, you know, just wait, you'll get a good groove on and then it won't work anymore. And I'm like, well, <laughs> great, <laughs> so much, you know, it's just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, still wouldn't trade it for the world, but man. Oh it, yeah, and, and it's and it's wild too. And then like you know, they, it's such a cliche. They always say it, but like it goes so fast. So it's fast. like everyone it, says it. It's everyone. painfully <laughs> slow. No, but here's the thing: it's painfully uh -huh. slow and it's incredibly fast at the same time, which makes no sense. Yeah. It's like a complete time warp. Um, I but, honestly uh, feel like life is kind of like that, though, man. In a sense, yeah. right? Like, there's, well, I COVID mean, just kind of whacked it for everybody, right? Like, sure. that just kind of, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that is life, though. Uh, oops, I screwed this up. Uh, I'm gonna wait until our co-stream series. Oh, zombie. Yeah, that'd be fun, zombie. Um, man, maybe if I do the Micron Plus uh, tap changer thing whenever you, whenever you do that. Um, Isn't it fun? It's fun to stream with a buddy, dude. I like, I, I'm so much better with another person. Like, this I can is talk only the answer. second time I've ever done it. Oh, well, not entirely true. I did a podcast years and years ago, but Aside from Steve and me doing it, uh, that was like for the 3D printing stuff, that's really been it. And now this, it, I will say it depends. Um, like not not to say names, but like I've done a couple of streams years and years and years ago where like it was a little bit like pulling teeth kind of, it, like, like just not getting any, you have to, it has to be like, a personality that you can vibe with that also sort of is contributing in one way, shape, or form. So it's not- 100%, 100%. Yeah, I think the key is like you said, streaming with a buddy, like someone that you get along with that you, you've got, you know, some sort of, you know, I don't know. Rapport. But yes, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. 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 Um, dude, I've done a number of streams and podcasts and stuff over the years. I mean, a lot of a lot of people in, in, in the chat have like been on my podcast or have certainly yeah. like been Figure in the that chat. Money. Yeah, we do. So I do one currently called Maker That Money, where we talk about maker entrepreneurship. So if you're ever interested in something like that, we go Friday, most Friday mornings. Uh, but you know, you can listen back as a podcast. Um, it's you, and, Andrew, uh, right? Uh, Andrew. Yeah, from me Loop. and Andrew I've from Three D Glue. Oh. I think I told you that, it, that started as just like we were just like having a call to like just bond over like some of the chaos of like running a business. And then we're like, let's just record this because I think people will find this interesting. And then it just kind of became a podcast. Um, but I would was do it during no COVID or no, there was this before it was like, yeah, it was kind of during COVID. It was kind of during COVID. It was like, I, I took a break from, uh, cause I, I kind of go through, I mean, how many of you guys can relate? Like, I just go through these modes where like, I'm super into something and then I kind of like, it fizzles a little bit of burnout on it. Um, or I just bite off way more than I can chew and like something's got to give. And so I was doing like, yeah. before that I was doing hot mix with Jim and Caleb and I love that show so much and it broke my heart to like have to like step away from that. But like the timing of when that worked for them and like what I had going on with the business at the time, like it just didn't, it didn't work. Um, and so I'm glad to see that they kind of kept with it. Yeah. Uh, I, I love I forgot you were, that. you also did like, uh, you did like community catch up with Travis a long time right, ago. Right, so that that was like before Hot Makes, like yeah. community catch up was a thing that I did with A Pyro, and then he's he's since like gone off and become like the Spinner King, and dude, you know, he's, he's the Spinner Man. Friends, he's just like he's just make he's just crushing it with stuff. I love that guy. I need which reminds me, I need to I need to call me. Got to get some food together or something. He's like local, and I I still don't see him enough. But anyway, um, you're a hundred percent right that having like somebody that meets you where you're at with the energy that like can carry the conversation and you know you can have a little back and forth with and yep it's, it's uh, all about that energy you know yep no i that's why am i struggling here am i doing this wrong what i'm you got trying to get on? these they're the cable clips and i'm yeah, looking at the okay, photo so, so the trick is so the the side that's got like the 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 channel in it you can tell like that's where the ribbon cable is going to go that's going to yeah. be like not the bottom right so the inside of the machine you're yep. gonna want to put that hook in first on the top, okay. and then you're gonna snap the bottom part in, and just to, like you're not gonna hurt it. Like, don't be afraid of it, man. Don't really? Do the I'm not gonna... Just get it in there and like. Oh my click. god. Okay. Okay. Click, click. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's just it's more oomph than I was expecting. I think. I, yeah. I, it's like two uggadugas. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so you're saying again though that, okay, yeah, so it's not on the bottom, it's on the inside is where that clip goes. And so we need on the yeah, long so, I mean, side. I've, if you wanna, I pulled in really tight on my shot if you wanna uh, oh, yeah. if you let wanna me get a look at that. Uh, let me see here. I'm gonna do guest roll, there you go, so you can show. Yeah, so like right now, let's see here. So you can see I've got them in uh, here and here. I'll flip it over this way too. It's, yeah. it, 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 that contrast is a little tough with the black oh, on yeah, black. Oh, yeah, the black on black <laughs> does, yeah. is not doing any favors. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but I, you see those, the, so the loop is here on the inside, and that's where the ribbon cable is going to run through. And So this is a nice little quality of life thing, because before the, you know, I don't know if you remember on the Mark III, like you, it was kind of like tuck the ribbon cable into the extrusion channel, and, uh, yeah, you know, there was a little bit that. more zip, there was a little more zip tying happening and stuff, which was fine. You know, it works. But... Fun, fun fact about these uh, these clips, I told you these are injection molded. Here, I'll, I'll pull yeah. out one that's uh, the extra. They give you a ton of spares too, which is really nice, right? Yeah, I, I could see uh, somebody doing one too many Steve Uggadugas. <laughs> I mean, it is possible to snap it, but these are, these are uh, I'm not sure if they're ABS or if they're polycarbonate. But the, the, fun, the fun fact about this is um, really if you ever have a chance to tour the, the Prusa factory, uh, you'll see, like, there is injection molding happening. Let me get that focus in. Hold on. Aiming, aiming. Dude, I think I put them on the wrong side. <laughs> well, they go they go on both sides of the thin extrusions if you want to skip ahead. So th this, this is injection molded. Uh, and what they're doing is they're taking a lot of the recycled filament from um, either the filament line that they're making or they grind up the stuff that's like the old spool sides, which were polycarbonate. Oh, cool. So they'll yeah, regrind yeah. and then they'll use that to injection mold this. There's uh, some parts now like the spool holder on the mini, the whole like front brace is injection molded. So you're starting to see like where it makes sense more of that. Uh -huh. um, but I, I like it because the sustainability piece is nice. So instead of throwing that stuff away, they're finding ways to reuse it. Yeah, that is really cool. I, yeah. I, sorry, is there a question? Is there a technique to get them out? <laughs> um, yes. So if you grab one of your like bondus or your, sorry, your like uh, where, yep. wearers or whatever, get it in there and then just like pry. Okay. And then go reverse. Oh, so. there we go. Cool. Yeah, I I, um, I got so excited on figuring out how to get them in that I just started placing them, but it was on the wrong <laughs> the wrong of the long ones. So they need to be on the bottom here. Also. Uh, uh, Sweetham, thank you for nine months. Hi, all joining late, but I'm here now. Welcome, and uh, Dan's 3D Prince. I like, I like your name, Dan. Uh, member for five months. Thank you very much. Only the fewer spools of the last four years are with the laser edging. Those are PC. Blame Pooch. <laughs> okay, so these are yeah, these so are PC. Did somebody in the chat say these are PC? Uh, the laser old spools edge. were Pet G, not PC. The newer spool of the last four years with the late, I'm not sure what the, oh, with the laser, with the laser edging, huh. Maybe he's talking about when they engrave the, what type of filament it is on the side of the prusament spools. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Maybe. But th those I know are polycarbonate. The sides of the spools for prusament, those little hex things, those are polycarbonate, um, which injection molds super nice. And I'm, I'm not sure, I want to say the, uh, spool holders, so I can grab one of those if you want to see it later. But um, I, I want to say those are glass fill ABS, or they're ABS. Uh, they've got that that interesting texture to them. So I think there's a couple different polymers that they're using for different things, and I'm I'm not. Don't quote me on that because I'm not a, a pro. But it was really cool to see all of that when I was uh, back in Prague in uh, what was it last November. Um, and if you haven't seen it yet, by the way, uh, Scotty from Stranger Parts did a phenomenal tour. There's also a, a great um, State of the Prusa 2024 video that talks about it as well. Like, the, the, it is an impressive factory. The filament uh, factory? The, yeah, oh, well, not yeah. just the filament lines, like the production of the Mark IVs and the uh, XLs and all the machines. And if you're ever in Prague, like, you can totally get a tour. You just, like, email them or, or uh, hit them on the chat and say, like, I'm going to be in town, and they'll they'll happily give you a tour. I did I did catch the recent 2024 one that uh, you said Strange Parts is the channel? Strange Parts, yeah, Scotty. Uh, yeah, I did watch so that. He, that was a really he, good video. He does the China tours typically, and I think this was one of the first tours he did, like, that wasn't in China. 
And dude, that was such a wild experience. One, just to watch uh, how uh, he is super professional, like how he and his producer and his cameraman like all worked and the workflow for that. And it was a really just eye-opening educational experience. Super fun. I yeah. was so happy to be part of that. Um, and, yeah, the and end a lot result of was, was a really interesting uh, video well, to see. See the. Yeah. I haven't seen an updated. I, I haven't seen an updated like detailed. I, I think there was. I mean, I've watched tours from years ago that were posted. I don't know if it was Joel or Tom or whoever had done them, but like it was. It was a different. And also things have changed so much with new machines totally. and advancements. And um, over the last three ish years, I feel like so many things have gone in house uh, even more so now. So it's cool to see sort of those new processes. I mean, I think. I don't think that prior to getting into all this stuff, I really was that fascinated with manufacturing, but now like, it's freaking cool, dude. Like just seeing the way companies, um, just seeing the way companies are set up for their manufacturing, like it's it's really neat. Um, well, especially with Prusa because of like, it's it's very near and dear to me because the, you know, they, they started out of their, you know, garage sure. uh, or, you know, just like, and, and so to watch that evolution over the last 10 years, um, has just been just amazing, right? So this isn't just like, they didn't just get a bunch of venture capital and buy a bunch yeah. of, you know, stuff. It was it's, like it was an incremental, right? I, mean, I mean, they were the first, you know, real, I don't know if I would say the first real print farm, but I mean, like, you know, open, it's just, it's it's really cool. Um, yeah. it, so obviously, like, to, to try to compete and exist with that in this day and age is an interesting challenge. You know, I don't envy a lot of, of what they have to, uh, endure on that front, but it's it's very impressive to like see what you can build from nothing basically using your own product as your fabrication tool set. I mean, it's really yeah. like re it is rep wrap through and through and beyond just the machines. Like they have engineers on site that are making box folders and like just coming up with little like. Even so, the, see these little bags of screws. Like I'm gonna geek out for a second. Give me a, give me a pass. But like, yeah. Let me. Here, I'm little, gonna give you the full screen. Hold on. Guess full. There you go. Little bags. You see these little bags of show, screws? Show them. Show them. Okay, yeah. hold on. I gotta zoom in. Yeah, I gotta zoom, zoom in, in, dude. You got your camera. <laughs> okay. So, so these. I mean, we see these all the time in like whatever IKEA packages and stuff. They're just like uh, heat sealed in there, and then there's some ink jetted labeling uh, on there. Let's try this angle here. Let's see. Yeah, I'll hold it here. There we go. Look at that. Um, so there's a machine that they made in-house for this where they just like dump buckets of, of all the different screw sizes in and it like runs them down through these little hopper things and then like heat seals them and prints them and they made all of that themselves. Yeah, it's awesome. Right? And you're like, yeah. It, to, almost to the point where it's like um, some of the production, sometimes the production manager is like, I wish we would just like buy the <laughs> sure. machine. There's, we there's, there's existing that. products out there that could maybe right. do some of this stuff. Yeah. But that's so <laughs> part of their core ethos and stuff. And it's so impressive to see. So if you have a chance to check out the Strange Parts video, the reason I like that so much is like Scotty was so uh, specifically interested in wanting to tell the story his way. So yeah. if you watch every other t uh, tour, I'm gonna come back to this camera angle here real quick. If you watch every other tour that they've done, um, it's typically been like Joe or some of the senior management like walking through and giving the tour at their pace with, you know, I'm gonna show you this and I'm gonna show you their, this. Their commentary more so. Right, and Scotty was like, I wanna talk to the line worker. I wanna like, I wanna like know the nuts and bolts of like how this is done and I wanna tell it like so so it was a little invasive but prusa was really accommodating of that like shout out to blanca and a lot of the team that was just like they it was very disruptive to their day because he's like i'm going here now i'm going here yeah. and they're like okay hey, all right <laughs> they're like this isn't conventional this isn't normally how we no, do things I mean, like the amount of access that he got for that was just unprecedented and it was yeah. really neat it's really neat it's a, you know it's a great video i i very much so enjoyed it i think someone posted it at work and i was like oh cool i'll, I'll give it a watch and it was from beginning to end, it was really cool to see. And, and like like you just said, I've watched plenty of like either in-house made or, you know, a video that like Joel or Tom or whoever, I, it's been years that I've watched some of these, these videos, but like this was a different angle on it with very much like a, what felt like more of, even more of a behind the curtain than some of those other tours in, entailed. Yeah. Uh, and, and that was intentional. Like, you know, Scotty was, he's like a theater guy. Like he has a very, like, 
He, would, he had a vision. Every morning he was like, he had his iPad out and he's like sketching. He's like, okay, I want to do this. This is how I want to frame the shot. I want to do, you know, and I was like, wow, this is, this is wild. I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, that's super cool. He seems like a cool dude. Oh, he's a great guy. You know what? If you're going to be at Remurf, uh, he was telling me he's thinking about because he lives really close. Uh, it's a day trip for him. He's talking about making an appearance at Remurf. So I don't oh, know sick. if that's official That'd or not, awesome. but yeah, there's yeah, a good yeah. chance you can meet him. That'd be cool. Um, okay, so I'm done with the clips. I'm done with the feet. I'm working on power supply now. Also, let me get really caught up here. Uh, nice. Thank you very much for 22 months. I hope that everyone is healing well. Yeah, we're, we're all over. We were sick um, last Wednesday. I didn't stream. Um, I was in bed with a fever and chills. So um, yeah, we're doing, everyone's everyone's good. Erin got over it quicker than me because she caught it way before me. Uh, and she's in Arizona actually uh, with Jackson, which is- Pick the screen back, dude. Nobody wants wild. to look oh, at Oh yeah, my bad. I, dude, uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we are, we're doing a lot better. Thank you. Um, there's also Volkswagen. We've done a pressure farm for floor production, tooling and jigging. Uh, mm -hmm. Prague, E3D in UK, quite amazing. Like I don't want to interrupt, but where is the link? Uh, the, mm. the giveaway link has not gone live yet. I was not pinged. So let me let me get that going here. Um, also, if you have not already, smack the like button. Let's see. We're at we're at 87 likes, 121 viewers. Let's get. I believe we can get to like 125, even with 121 people here. I believe. Have I, have I, I believe. Liked it? Let me make sure. If you have I've not, liked smack it. it, Pooch. Come on, man. I'm gonna All smack right. it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up my Bangladeshi click farm and I'm gonna hit you like 500 times. Do it, dude. <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> and then you're gonna get banned. You're gonna get banned. Yeah. YouTube. Like this uh, this yeah. content was removed for violation of policy. Okay, so <laughs> I am Excuse pasting. Me. Bless you. Pasting the link in chat. No, and there then we go. We'll There's be another live one. There's another for one. 30 minutes, and then we will do the drawing pin message. Cool. So we are there. All right, where are you at, man? Where are you at? Okay, so I'm on, I'm on the power supply. It says I need M4 by 10s, which I got. I need M3 10s, which I don't see, which I know they're here. I'm just, I haven't found them yet. M3. Familiar is just, a, first of all, get those M3s, 10s, put them in. I don't know, you, what do you got? Your screw sorter? You got your handy dandy? I don't, I don't uh, have it right now, man. I don't have anything right now. Oh, oh, oh I do have that, dude. I do have go, that. Go yeah, get that. that. Okay. okay, so get. Get yeah. your, get your, get, this is one of my favorite gifts that was ever given. This was given to me by none Steve. other than Steve Bills. Steve, the man yep. himself. Yeah, this is like, I, I need like a bunch more of them and thankfully they're printable, so I can do that. But the um, the most common screw type. Yeah, MP10. Is no, an MP10. That, that, that was definitely, uh, I didn't realize because I think on the MK, MK3S Plus, each bag for each step had the exact amount of screws, right? That's I think that's how it was then. Yeah, so the way that they've, They've done. They've changed their process around, and I geek out on this stuff too. Where they've given you, first of all, way more than you need on each of the bags of screws, like by probably like ten to fifteen percent in some cases. Okay. And then on top of that, they give you this whole baggie of spares as well of like the most commonly lost things <laughs> that yeah. uh, it's just Drop easier on to your give you one or more of. Or break. Yeah, yeah, which is really nice. So. Um, you, long story short, you're gonna have more than enough of everything, and then you're gonna have that whole like, what the heck do I do with all this extra? Um, I finally bit the bullet and like got a bunch of those like little screw sorter things. Obviously, different people have different things like sortimos and whatnot, but sure. oh, um, yeah, yeah. because of the number I'm building, like I got my label maker out, I put like what each one was, uh, went through. And I didn't quite go as nice as like doing the the printed image of what it is, but um, but I'm yeah, that, that saves a ton of time. The whole this whole uh, but this whole thing behind me is going to be all good affinity. I'm working on the first drawer, which is all M3 hardware. So I'll have like M3, M4, M5, M2, um, electronics, uh, all crimping stuff. Like I plan on it's a it's a long ongoing process, and not something I plan on having done soon. Uh, but that's at least my long term goal. Also, what the heck am I doing here? The M310 scene. The Nero the right bag. Side. The Nero bag. The M3 and E nuts. Okay, we're good. Um, I saw also Sweet M Aster, people like me, who's Pooch. So, I've known Pooch from just the 3D printing community for, I think I mentioned earlier, like six or so years. And then, uh, I don't even know. No, at that point, you still had Repcord. I think you were just, you were doing like filament more so back then, uh, and like some 3D printing accessories. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was way before, so the, the Pooch is probably best known for Repbox, Repcord, um, and Repracks, rep, rep I, I would say. Yeah, yeah those yeah. are your, 
the big thing. So he's the creator behind all of them. Um, that's Pooch. <laughs> but Pooch is, Pooch is uh, well now you said for the last six months you've worked with Prusa, but you've been involved with the 3D printing space hobby technology for a long time. I mean, yeah, yeah. If you if you have a chance to go to any, I'm I'm at most of the events. Uh, I work with a lot. I also work with 3D Gloop. Um, obviously, I talked about the the podcast we do, but like I've been helping with uh, a lot of uh, biz development and stuff uh, on Andrew's side, and he helps me as well, which is awesome. Um, so I got my hands on a lot of different things. You dabble. Uh, I do. I dabble yeah. probably too much, right? But that's like kind of the maker <laughs> yeah. the maker way. Like I yeah. have to have all the jobs. Yep. I just think that, like, as much as I really wish I could chill out a bit sometimes, I feel like I've, I've wired myself this way for so long that, like, I would be so bored, man. Like, just to just to just sort of exist. Like, I don't think I could do it. Like, I don't know if I could do it, man. I've always got to be working on something. I mean, that's kind of the one of the things that makes us makers, right? Like, we have no sure. chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's it's fair. not entirely true. Like, I definitely have some chill, but it's like, I, you know, I... My dad retired like probably 10 years ago now. And I remember him telling me like before he retired, he's like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do when I retire. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like there would be no short, like retirement to me is just about doing what you want when you want. Right. Sure. Where you're not, you're not having to make decisions based on money uh, or, you know, what the rest of the family is doing is as much. It's, it's just like, but I got to have a project. Yeah. I'm always working on my house a little bit. Like that's my other big hobby. Um, you know, so I, I, I work on the business. Uh, I don't get to do a lot of for funsies stuff. So it's, it's nice when you can, can kind of combine things like this is fun for me right now. Like, but at the same time, I like, I will put this thing to use once it's together. And so it's like, Hey, that's a win-win. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I like, I have a much easier time doing things if I'm like, I, there's something like functional or productive I'm getting out of it. Otherwise I have a really hard time. The exception to that is like watching, hanging out with Aaron and like watching a TV or something like that at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know, for a little bit, just to sort of down, um, uh, chill out before bed because if I can't go from working on projects to straight to sleep. I've tried, it's awful. <laughs> it is awful. You know, and that's you interesting. I, I hear a lot of people say that and I like, I can't watch TV and like, ch I feel like that stimulates me too much. So it's like I got that's when I got to do my reading a little bit more even if like I'm on my phone too much but gotcha. I know a lot of people I know a lot of people love like to unwind that way and it, um, it depends on what I mean lately Aaron and me have been on just like bad TV so it's like it's like married at first sights that like and stuff like that dude where it's yeah, like yeah. we're just watching it we're Guilty like pleasure. giggling yeah like oh, it's no, not absolutely no judgment like I get it yeah it, you know and and honestly when you have young kids and stuff and like sometimes like you and your wife just need like just a mindless like let's just chill out and yep. watch stuff but but um yeah it's i don't know like again that stimulation like right before bed or or sure. what it is like so i think everybody's just wired different and i'm so jealous of people that can that can do that can drink coffee late in the day can watch tv before bed i don't know what it would tell me in the chat like what's your what's your wind down routine i want to know what you're thinking. Dude, for some reason the power supply is not fully aligned. I think I, let me put a light on. I can't, it's hard to see the black on black. Um, to black see, let's black. see. I'm gonna go get my sixes. Yeah, definitely not aligned. So let me loosen this. Uh, if you can't sleep right after working on a project, try building an hour longer. Yeah, I, my issue is, is that once I get into it, I'm like, I can stay up till the sun comes up if uh, I'm really yep, into a project. Yep, yep, yep. I, one thing I'm trying to do less and less of, which has been a struggle for me, is not scrolling, not scrolling in bed, man. I start researching stuff before sleep, and then it's like, it's like, yeah. I just, I can be hours, I'm like, how, what the heck? I was, you know, I was like, lately with the house, it's been like hardscaping Reddit and, and like, you know, like, oh, like I feel paver, you. Move pavers and, and just, you know, all these, all these projects. You, you've been scrolling for like two hours. Dude, yeah. yeah. And, and, and now I'm, I try to turn it off and I'm laying in bed just thinking about my, you know, backyard and, 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 and maybe like, you know, I should do this. And, I, and then, oh man. Uh, and then I always come up with more questions. So then I'm like, okay, let me just, let me look up one more question. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I wish vicious. I could tell you it gets better, but like, I swear, you know, you have the house, you have the kids, like it's yeah, just like it's, it's, more and more. <laughs> you, I think you have it's to... just you have to start to become a staunch defender of your like time. So it's like, yeah. I have a lot of respect for people that can like segment. Um, 
but the, it's an art, right? Because like the there's a lot of people that don't, that'll do that, but then they become like really flaky. They don't respond. Like they just ghost a lot of things. And like I don't I don't like being that either. Sure. Um. So you know I don't you know it. I think that's a just an ongoing learning Struggle. experience. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. sort of sort of uh, evolve and adapt as you go. Figure out what works, what doesn't work, and I mean, I mean that's, that's life, baby. Yeah. Sure, it is. It is life. It is life. That worked. That didn't work. Okay, power supply is in. The issue I had was I dropped it all the way onto these screws, uh, and it needs to be sort of centered on these M310 screws. Um, also, from the weight of the power supply, the little like T nuts are like they 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 went from parallel to they went down a little bit. So I popped everything back in. It looks like it's good now. Let me tighten up these there last two go. screws. There you go. Power yeah, yeah. I should be done. Also, anyone that just showed up, the giveaway link is open. Um, so if you haven't, definitely fill it out. And I think in about 20 more minutes, we will do the drawing for the school of pollen maker for the Also, let me- Pollen maker. Uh, see, um, alcohol helps before, alcohol does not help before bed. <laughs> alcohol does not. Uh, I sleep like, like crap, bad advice. Man. Yeah, I sleep That's... like crap no, no, no. after. Here it is for me. It's like the one, one to two drinks maybe sometimes. But if I was like a regular thing, yeah. yeah. But if you go too much, then it's like, there's a Goldilocks zone with that. Let, so well, that's me know. with uh, playing pool and bowling, dude. Uh, like a beer and a half in, I'm at my prime. I'm not questioning my moves. Right. I'm like nailing Just it. And then to be once awesome. I cross yeah. over, I'm like, this guy sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's a slippery slope between awesome and awful. <laughs> right. Right. It's like you know, just enough to take away like the uh, the hesitancy or the inhibition, you know, that that kind of like makes you second guess your thing. Like where you just kind of like I'm going, I'm sending this ball to yeah. to like, OK, now I'm just throwing everything in the gutter. Yeah. Zombie says wind down is a crash after drinking coffee and streaming till 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah, he does late night streams and he's he's I think you're East Coast. So you're two hours ahead of me, which is wild. Um, uh, just Liz go until you can't go week. anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Liz says several days a week I wind down by watching zombie stream and no phone in bed. I can see that. Um, streams streams are pretty laid back in general, and like I can. I mean, last night I've been I'm, I'm getting back into fish keeping a little bit. I haven't in many, 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 many years. And so last night, dude, I spent the last hour of my day just watching people talk about different species and like planting tanks and stuff. It was so relaxing. So like I can watch stuff like that and just you know uh, kind of zone zone out, but. I uh, see absolutely nothing. I work on my projects till I drop because I get lost in it. You need a second baby, then all you'll want to do is sleep. <laughs> uh, watch streams for uh, by Steve, Nero, or you. Careful Daniel, with you... that. You Sometimes you decide to have two and you get a bonus baby like I did. Um, oh, you're, you're, that's right. Young, you're younger twins. Yeah. 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 We were going for two, we got three. So, you know, <laughs> if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. I get home after a 14 hour shift, go to bed and sleep for three to four hours before getting up to repeat. No time for a while. Oh man. Oof. Um, again, as an entrepreneur, owner of uh, things are often crazy. Six hours sleep is max for me for years. Six hours, oof. I, I mean, can, I can, I'm, I'm I can okay. do six hours for a little bit, but I gotta get back up to my seven to eight usually. Erin definitely needs more sleep than me. She goes to bed usually a couple hours before me and depending on the day, she could be trying to, like as soon as she gets jacked down in the morning, she's like, I'm gonna try to go for, Another nap. Um, it's it depends for me. I've I, I mentioned we talked about this a while back, but like I found out I had sleep apnea, which was uh, ah. which was a result of me not knowing that was a thing. Basically, it was Aaron pissed off ha. that I kept snoring like a chainsaw, and yeah. so I was talking about it on stream, and someone's a couple people were like, oh, like maybe you have sleep apnea, and so I never heard of it. I googled it, and then I did so a sleep common. study. Yeah, yeah, I did a sleep study and yeah. found out that, yeah, like I'm not breathing correctly multiple times every hour. So they actually, um, I use a 3D printed uh, dental device, dude. It's like a 3D printed dental nylon. And all it does oh, is it, it pulls my jaw forward like a couple millimeters to keep the airflow open. I, I yeah. it changed, it was a game, it's been a game changer for me, man. I don't have to nap anymore. I don't crash midday. Like it's been awesome. So yeah. I'm a big, a big, uh, that's a big I, I lecture. Was... I mean, the sleeping, whatever, however many hours you need, you know, whatever it is that allows you to get the quality you need, like sure. I am a big advocate for that. Yep. Um, 
I don't, I, I didn't have as, uh, my dad has sleep apnea, like I, a couple, I know it's super common. For yeah. me, I have a deviated septum, and so I can at least get away, I wear no strips to bed, and that, yeah. that makes all the difference for, for me. Yeah. Um, but uh, I know a lot of people that use the CPAP machines and stuff like that. No shame in your game, like whatever gets you your, your sleep, required man. sleep, man. Yeah. That's one of the best things that you can probably do for yourself. Let's see, M310s we've got in the pot uh, because <laughs> you told me to pour them in, so we're good on that. And get, get them M3 in there, man. Sixes are what I need now, and I don't think I've opened those. These are these little guys. I'm just gonna dump these out. Yeah, you know, definitely need some sixes for this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pour that to the side here. Let's see. So if you hadn't noticed yet, one of the nice things, one of the nice improvements, just a little slight, like, again, the Mark IV, it's the fourth iteration of the i3 platform. Uh, well, I mean, major iteration, right? Because there's been the Plus and the S and sure. all that stuff. Sure, like the in-betweens. But, but yeah, so like a lot of little, like, you know, nothing revolutionary, more evolutionary stuff. Um, the, uh, they went to a metal box now for the... Yeah, versus board. printed, right? Right, and that does a couple things. If you, well, you you haven't started putting the box together, so I don't want to jump ahead. I'm, do, too I'm much. doing it now. I'm doing. I'm actually looking okay. for the buddy board. I'm trying to figure out where I set it. It's around there somewhere. You gotta. Were have they the not board. supposed to have? Uh, I know I'm going slow, but like, were they not supposed to have any gummy bears right now? Because it feels like I feel like I earned at least. No, a gummy no, 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 no gummy bears until you get right, to the dude. end of this step, dude. Okay, so what's, right. what's messed up is on the upgrade, Steve Steve can attest to this, you, they don't let you get your gummy bears until you start building, because there's a process on the upgrade where you have Carry to go down. and strip it down to the frame yep. like I did. And you, you are re rewarded no gummy bears for going backwards, <laughs> only forwards. It feels unfair, but I mean, I, I don't yeah, yeah. You know what, take it up with Joe, okay? I'll, I'll, okay? I'll provide your feedback to him. Yeah. I'm sure that they'll, I just, yeah, I'm like, man, the frame out. is like all together and it hasn't even been one section of a gummy bear. <laughs> like, man. So we got our we got our metal box here. Oops. Yeah. And uh, so what's really cool about it, and as you start going, you'll see the, the box serves a couple purposes. Uh, one, they heat sink the board to it, which you're gonna see in the next step here in just a second, because the, those little sticker looking things that are in that bag uh, that you saw, those are thermal pads. Cool. And they heat sink to the box, so that helps dissipate heat from the steppers and everything. And then it adds rigidity to the frame because now we've got, we're locking down that Z axis to the frame on both the power supply side and the frame side, uh, which is nice, so as we, you know, every little bit when you're trying to go faster that you can um, cut down on any vibration or yeah. flex is is key, right? Yeah, it's a very different board than, uh, I think the one I was used to was the... Um, oh the Einzi. Einzi, Rambo, Rambo, right? Yeah, or, or yeah, Rambo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was made by uh, our homies at Tiny, Tiny Machines. Uh -huh. So this board, the buddy board and all the boards now uh, across the spectrum are... Um, made in-house on their own custom SMT line, which is also featured very heavily in the videos we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. Scott, Scotty's and the uh, in-house one. And that was a, uh, I mean, I think a, a really smart move given, um, you know, COVID times and how dependent uh, supply chain, like the, the issues with supply chain and whatnot, uh, what problems that was creating mm -hmm. uh, were. So they decided, like, we don't want to be dependent on having our electronics manufactured elsewhere. And so they took it upon themselves to bring it in-house, and that's what Good. they did. That and that's seems what like we a up. huge undertaking. <laughs> uh, like, an I, expensive I, I, one as well. Yeah, yeah. like, I, I understand. Like, it, don't get me wrong. I, I get the I get the notion, like, it, it makes sense to me, but also that the task of doing that um, and also, like, doing it with, a, with your own you know, original mm. hardware, <laughs> I, I go, I won't pretend to under, I mean, PCBs and circuitry, like it's, yeah. it's all to me, like a little bit that's, of witchcraft. That's, that's not my thing either. Right. Like yeah, it's okay. like, yeah, indistinguishable from magic to us. Yep. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, but a, I'm, but a mere mortal, uh, Pooch. <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't so. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I feel you on that. And you know, it's a, it's something <clears throat> that I think Joe and his brother um, have had some some good chops in the electronics world from from the jump, and so I think it was important to them uh, to be able to do that. And it's it's really cool. I mean, you look at this and the quality of the the components, the density of it, obviously the capabilities of it. Um, 
you'll notice if you're sneaking a peek on there too, you might see some labeling on there for things that um, aren't currently implemented, but will allow mm -hmm. for expansion in the future, which is cool. Cool. Uh, it's yeah, also a battery, so. battery on the board to remember yep. or assume some yep. of the parameters in case, or during, during, or is that for power, is that for run out? If it loses power, it's able to save some info before it kills yeah, I mean, it harkens back to the old PC days, right? Where the, um, the just, uh, I don't know if it's for the EEPROM or what they're calling it, the CMOS. I don't uh -huh. know if it has a CMOS. I don't know what the, somebody with better technical knowledge would be able to speak to that. But um, but yeah, you know, saving saving state. I, and I don't know what the, the spec battery life is. I would hope for a couple yep. of years, you know. But it's yeah. just a little coin cell battery. Reminds me of my uh, Game Boy... My Game Boy games, <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah, the, I mean the cartridges had had that to be able to save your state. And I remember as a kid, like one of the earlier ones I got was like Pokemon Blue, and when it finally went out on me and I lost my save state, it broke my heart, man. Oh, like the amount of hours I've dumped just into ro this. rocks your world as a kid. Yeah, life is over. This is it for me, you know? Said <laughs> I've never had a good run. That's it. I'm done. So M36s are going into the frame, it looks like. Insert form features the back of the extrusion, so they resemble a rectangular pattern, leaving a gap of at least three millimeters. Okay, so don't snug them. Um, there we go. Do they, might be a silly question, but I don't know a ton about the manufacturing process, but when they're die casting, does it come out with all these threads ready to rock and roll? Um, no, I believe it's a oh, secondary sorry. op. You have to okay. tap separately. Okay. I, I, I was like, I figured sort of as much, but I, I, I also, again, don't know. So yeah, it was EEPROM and was for three, was for three years back in the days. Okay. That's how long it lasted. Okay. So there goes there, that goes there. We're skipping the next holes. It looks like, and then we're going with the ones down here. So let's say, what did it say? It was EEPROM. Okay. So LSE. Okay. So it's not, it's not an EEPROM anymore. I have to imagine it's more sophisticated than that. I don't, I don't know. I know it was Revenge. like, that's what we said. We said save to the EEPROM. My, the insinuation is if he's saying it was that it's something different. Does that mean it's Let's see. Yeah, they're different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting thing. So L LSE, LSE in the chat is saying, yeah, they, they've been drilled afterwards, but before coding. Um, that is an interesting thing. And you'll notice like when you're, when you're tapping your screws in there that because they do the drill and tap uh, before they do the powder coat, um, sometimes it's like a little bit harder to get it in there because like a little oh, of that, that powder. That's what plugging. I was experiencing right now. Then yep. so it yep. takes a little bit of initial sort of like push just to get it started, and then it, once it bites, you're yeah. good to go. Yeah. Okay. I think that's that just sense. part of the wor workflow for um, the order of operations for for that. But usually it's it's minor, and the screw just kind of taps itself in the way it yeah. needs to. I mean, I'm known. I mean, whether this was tapped before or after, like I'm. I'm known to drop screws, so I don't know how much how much is the you know the coating that's slightly over the thread, or from the process, or um, versus. Mm -hmm. Well, wait. So this is. So you're saying that once this is, you think that once this is diecast, then it's, the threads are put into it, and then it's coated after that. I believe. So I, I okay. haven't seen that process. Sure. No, I'm but, not gonna, I won't hold you to it as far as But like I that's... think that's the common order of okay. operations. I, I'm, okay. I, I have a high level of confidence that that is the correct order. Okay. Okay, so this is just, oh, so this all slots. So this slots like this, these are. Yeah, so it helps if you like, you, so you see how it, like it, on the right side of the frame, you're keyholing in, right? So it's like kind of yeah. those like, Picture like hangers. Old, like you, okay, so let me so, get this. So like of... line those up and then just slide the little T nuts over to where they like kind of need to be when you keep holding. Okay. okay. So hold there. Okay, that looks about nope. There, that looks good. Oh, we did it. We're... We're, che we're, we're cheating in. again. Now everybody gets a pooch along with them on the assembly <laughs> process. Yeah, is this, Wouldn't is this that standard? Be great? It's like, yeah, yeah oh, live dude. stream with the, yeah, like live yeah. call pooch for every, every <laughs> yeah, month. Yeah, 
for purchase. If you felt like you didn't have enough, uh, if you felt like you didn't have enough responsibilities already, the oh my gosh, I'd probably do it. I, I love this kind of stuff, right? Like I really <laughs> wish I had more time, like for it, especially if I'm yeah. getting to build alongside. And, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I, I could see it. I could see it. Um, Okay, so you just sort of, it looks like you just got an angle to get these screws tightened in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, and I, I told you, like, you motivated me to, like, finally get, because I've been saying, like, I, I need to do more streaming again. Um, I, it motivates me to, like, get projects done. So, so like, I know I've got a stream that I'm going to do, but it took me forever to, like, ah, how am I going to set up a stream? Where am I going to do it? Yeah, like, right now I kind of tore my kitchen like, apart. Yeah, yeah, but it's, like... You're like, hey, let's do the stream. And, and I said, yeah, that's great. And then I, I started looking at it and then I spent like a good part of the day yesterday like getting set up and I was, ah, that's not right. And But now I'm like really happy that, you it know, looks I've got really good, dude. It looks yeah. really, I think um, Steve's, I was talking to Steve about this too because like part of him doing his Tuesday streams was he has a big list of projects he wants to get done and it's easier, like like having that, that sense of urgency or like, you know, like, oh, there's people that are going to be watching me or waiting on me right. or whatever. It, it, get, it lights that little bit of that fire that you need to sort of do the thing. Um, plus, it's fun. You know, again, you're hanging out with people, you're talking. So I, I absolutely get it. I I often will set sort of artificial deadlines for myself just right. because that's what I need. Otherwise, the thing will just get procrastinated. I'll just kick it. I'll kick, keep kicking the can down the road until, you know, until right. I have to get the thing done. So, Well, it creates it creates some accountability. Oop, we got a power you yep. back on again i really wish to man I, I love this camera so much but that sleep thing is so obnoxious Everybody you would think snack. that there'd be a way to like just dis disable like don't and, and i don't know i had to hack the thing it didn't have a clean hdmi so it's time for a new primary cam probably but i don't know if i'll do this ob spot or what i love you, having what is it right now what are you using this your... is a, like a canon m2 mirrorless from like six years ago and it's only 1080p but i like gotcha. that it's got dedicated glass I know I that just don't, um, Joel was recommended, um, I think Joel was recommended by Loyal, but also a few others. The ZV-1 slash ZV-1 variants are fantastic. Um, yeah, I think Steve's got a couple of those too, right? Yeah, the ZV I do too. I'm not that, using it right now. That's some... It's this guy. It's Yeah, it's this guy. Yeah, uh, but there's, there's two yeah. versions of it. I like this one. It doesn't have changeable lenses. There's a variant with changeable lenses, but honestly, like the compactness of this, it's fantastic. Clean HDMI out. I use a little... Um, What's I the usually... price point? Is it, and it's 4K? It is 4K. Yeah, um, I mm, I bought mine. This one was like December, not last December, December four, and I think I got it on sale for 6.99 roughly. Okay. Um, okay. But I think that I, I know that you can find them sort of secondhand. Like I think BNH sometimes has them. You can find them for as low as like five at times. But um, let's see. Zombie says I love my Canon M200s. Does need a capture card, but really awesome. Otherwise, aren't you, I thought you're using ZVs too, uh, Zombie? I know, I know that Tom Tom uses three ZV ones. That's actually why. That's actually why I got the first one. I was like, it's good enough for Tom. It's good enough for me because his his video production, like he, he wouldn't go with anything that's not you know like up to a certain level of quality so right that was the original well, region i picked it well up. and so much more about it is like more like the space you're in like having some depth behind you the lighting sure. yeah you know? yeah oh yeah i like to geek out on like tech and stuff but at the same time like just you know focusing on audio and some lighting and and for it me makes a huge difference. Huge difference. it makes a huge difference and for like i think a lot of people in the chat can relate too it's like we don't have the luxury of just like having a primary like streaming space all the time. Like you don't have a room that you can just like leave set up often. Yeah. Um, well, Cause like right I now could. I'm in the middle of my kitchen. <laughs> and so it's like, I have to set up and go and you know, it's a pain to like reposition everything. And so trying to find a way to like make it quick and re reproducible um, yep. is like the workflow I need to make sure that I keep doing it, right? Yep. No, I, I agree. I, I mean, in this, in ha I do have a dedicated spot here, but the issue is, is that because I don't just stream, the needs I have for live streaming, the needs I have for video shooting aren't exactly the same. So I'm still sort of bouncing stuff around and then, you know, I got to shoot in the garage. So it's bring the camera downstairs, unhook everything. So having, I think Nero has got like two sets with full computer camera and everything. Um, and that's really, really nice. That's yeah. Really, really nice. It is, it is um, nice when you can just leave it and not have to touch it. That's why, like, Steve's garage is great, like that, too. Like, he pretty much yep. just, you know, that's, and Show then he up just fires it up I and mean, go. Yeah. I mean, yep. that's, that, y y the accountability is one thing, you know, to keep doing it, right? Like, if you, so if you know people are waiting for you, you have a regular time you schedule. But then the second thing is, like, being able to leave it ready to go or minimizing the amount of work it takes to, like, 
fire up and go every time. So yeah. finding a way that, that works for you in your space, you know, that's important. We talk about workflow stuff on like our podcast a lot too. And um, th that's just a learning experience. What works for me, you know, might not be the same for you, but. Yep. Yeah, everyone's got their own, you know, they got to figure out what works best. Uh, hey, Diego. Hey, Dr. Daves. Uh, he says, no, I have my side overhead cam as M200s, uh, different lenses for each one. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay, so I'd say two or three more minutes here, and then we will do the drawing for a spool of filament. So links in chat, I'm going to pull it in like two minutes, and then we will do that. So um, so I'm putting can, on thermal pads now. Can I, can I win? Can I win the filament? Did you enter? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hey. I'm gonna say I've got so much filament as it is anyway. I'm gonna save that okay. for somebody else. <laughs> Peel off the white protective layer on the thermal pads. Okay, so the cool thing is it's kind of neat that it literally has the the box that matches the thermal pad. So you're just putting it inside of the lines, which is yeah, which right. Kind of cool. All, yeah. It's all silk screened right there for you. You ready to go? So we will place and says to take off the white, um, take off the white or the clear. I know it is white. Take off the white cover, leave the blue on. So we've got one there. We've got two smaller ones. I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure because I have the board flipped over, so I don't want to press too hard, but we'll just... Yeah, that's fine. Just, like, lay it in place. That's a good idea because sometimes you, like, you don't put it down quite right. Now, this is the part where, like, Steve will get really triggered. What you should do is just leave one that's off by, like, two degrees on oh, the... This one, on oh, this, this one is slightly... You yeah, get okay, so you can get, get, get in close with that so, so we can, like, make Steve's eye twitch. Okay. You know, because, like, he can't handle that kind of thing. Look at that. It's not in the lines, Steve. Yeah, can you see it, Steve? You can see the lines. <laughs> Yeah, I did something similar on the Trident build where like the corner Z brackets, I had the Voron logo facing the wrong direction. <laughs> oh my gosh, you can't handle it. You can't handle yeah, it. Yeah, it was it was funny building the VZ with Steve. Like I, I'd watched plenty of Steve's streams before, but like uh, uh. in real time building the same thing, it was so fun to be able to see like how different we approach certain things. And oh, yeah, the things yeah. that I'm just like, yeah, it's fine, move on. And Steve's like, no, 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 no. We gotta get this just right. I'm like, hold dude. on a second there, yeah. cowboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I put the Oh, Steve's um, like the the printing on the belt, what was it? The belt, on, the, dude. on the belt, uh -huh. yeah, has to be the right orientation. Yeah, or like, or, no or he was at least willing to concede like consistent. So if you're gonna do it one yep. way on one belt, it has to be the same on the other. You know, um, or or the same thing. The printing on the bearing blocks, like on the linear rail, like had to be you know lined up. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah, it was. It was great. Yeah, it was it, well, yep. it's funny because after that build series with them, now when I'm building things, like I think about all those things. Like I get to the belt and I can't not think about the text. And so my options are either just do it the right way up or out of spite, do it the wrong way. Yeah. So, like, I, usually I'll do it the right way up. I'm like, all right, like, you know, like let's, like, let's get Steve's blessing on this belt. But yeah, I, I can't, like, there's a few things that he did where I'm like, man, every time I build a printer now, I think about like belt orientation and like it's just certain things I never thought of before. Well, let me, tell you, um, let me tell you something. As a creator, okay, yeah. I think that, that that's actually like a good tactic, right? Like that social engineering, because like that creates engagement, right? So if you do something that's like clearly weird and wrong and stuff like uh -huh. that, then you're gonna get people commenting on your stuff and like, hey, that's a, that's a win, right? So like, <laughs> and, I, and I love like, I don't know, I'm, I'm like mean like that. It's just like, I, I love triggering people, you know, just in, a, in a fun and playful way. Not sure, like to, sure, sure, to, not serious, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, oh. I know, I know. And then Pooch, playing Pooch dumb. Not, yeah. not, not a, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know Pooch. Pooch is not a mean guy. <laughs> He's not purposely triggering. I, I, I mean. my, my, yeah, my shenanigans are cheeky and fun. Yeah, like pushing Chuck on a spool racer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come in my lane, man. That's all yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, no, man. I get it. I get it, man. Is it... <laughs> okay, let's, I'm, gonna, I'm going to pull the link now, so that way anyone that's Anyone that's filling it out, uh, let's see, I gotta remove it and then unpin it and I will, I don't know, count to 60 seconds and if anyone's filling it out right now, this is your your last moment. It's 91 people, so we'll, we'll wait a little bit. So wait, you're, you're bacheloring, how long are you gonna be a bachelor for here? So I don't know. Um, she you don't know? Well, so, so originally- uh, They, they uh, never called me. Back. Aaron, Aaron told me originally she was going to take uh, seven days and I was like, okay, that sounds like a lot, but all right. And so, and then that was like a couple weeks in, in anticipation of baby being due. Then baby didn't come on due date and it was like four or five days after she was at work and her, her boss already knew, like she'd been warning her, like as soon as they get the green light, I'm going to go and her boss said fine. And so 
she texts or calls me one night at work on break and said, hey, Aaron, or not Aaron, my, you know, Krista thinks she's having uh, like contractions possibly. I'm thinking about booking a flight. I said, okay. So she comes home on, this was Saturday night um, and books her flight. And she said, I'm flying out tomorrow at 10 a.m. I said, great, did you get a return flight? She says, yes. I say, when is it? She said, 11 days from then. And I said, what? And I was like, dude, 11 days, I was like, and I was like, I've traveled a lot. And I mean, when, when I was at Matter Hackers doing sales yes. stuff, I was traveling yeah. all over, but like, I was like, I've never even left you for that long. You're gonna take, you're gonna go with our baby for 11 days. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was kind of giving her crap for it, a little yeah. bit seriously, a little bit jokingly. And she's yeah. like, well, I can change it. I can change it. I was like, all right, well, I hope so. Because I was like, it, it, I, she, yesterday I was calling her a lot. And she said, I think I called her like eight o'clock last time. And she said, she yeah. was giggling. I said, what is it? She said, do you miss me? I said, why do you say that? She said, you called me like eight times today. And I'm like, did I really? And I, I didn't realize how often I'll do something. Like, hey, hon, I, I, you know, like I moved some rock or I did something like that. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm currently, it seems like 11 days, but I'm hoping it's not 11 days because as much as I enjoy the, you know, some of the productivity along with it, I'm like, man, it's freaking quiet here, dude. <laughs> yeah. You better stock up on that cereal. So you're going to be eating a lot of cereal these next couple, couple days. Erin left me with Cocoa Krispies, uh, uh, <laughs> Apple Jacks, and Fruity Pebbles, man. She knew. She knew. She's like, this guy ain't going to this guy ain't gonna be making dinners. This guy's going to cereal it up. So, oh, um, cereal's okay. oh, so you know good. I the wrong yeah. I, I, yeah, I love it. Um, okay, so I am going to download now the giveaway form or the giveaway. Actually, there's uh, 90 people so i think i can just copy paste this let me give let me give a quick shout out to mr grinch in the chat for understanding the super troopers reference i appreciate you brother good looking out Wait. oh what did you what, what's the reference that i said my, shena my shenanigans are cheeky and fun oh shenanigans yeah it's um aaron's the movie reference one man she all her, her and her family like i'll go over and they'll they'll be laughing you know say something everyone starts laughing and i'm like i don't get it but I also grew up with like a mom from Sweden and like yeah. the movies I yeah. watched, like, you know, I watched a lot of like Pippi Longstocking and stuff like that as a kid. And like, it's just not, it doesn't hit the same as, as some of yeah. the classics that other people grew up with, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I get that, I get that. Uh, I'm a big like movie buff and it's it's funny because my girlfriend, like half the time she'll like look at me, I'll, I'll throw some of your reference just because it's like habit and she'll uh -huh. be like, give me like this, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> and then she's gotten to the point where it's like, if she doesn't get it, she's like, that must be for some movie I haven't seen. I'm like, yep, so. Yeah, it happens all the time here. And luckily, I mean, you know, we've been together for eight and a half years now. It, it like, it's just, it's part of the program, man. I'm a, whenever I do get one though, she, it's like, I feel like I just like Captain Jeopardy. America. Oh, I, dude, I yeah, that yeah, reference. yeah. Wind, wind <laughs> comes in, like I suddenly have a cape and tights and I'm just standing there like, <laughs> Okay, all right, let's 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 go, uh, here we go. Okay, so before we do this, the uh, spin, I wanna give a shout out to Polymaker for letting us do this. They have been supporting the channel for like two years now, and both from the sake of giving away filament and working on awesome projects. Like we mentioned Milo, I am um, I'm going oh, to be printing Love parts in- Love the Polymaker guys. Yeah. Dude, the, yeah, I'm, I'm doing Galaxy Black ASA for the primary and I'm doing Gold ABS, which was Aaron's choice. I'm not usually a gold person, but I think the black on gold is gonna look pretty cool. It, it's a nice, gold. it's a really nice, yeah. Awesome I love gold. Going. There you go, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I know that one. I do know that one. I understood um, that reference. So for everyone uh, that entered in, I wish everyone uh, good luck. And I will reach out to the winner within 24 hours via email uh, to get you the form that you'll need to fill out to get your Polymaker gift card. So. Uh, on that note, Pooch, you're your honorable guest. So how many times are we shuffling the wheel today? We got to shuffle. Uh, well, no, I don't want to be too obnoxious. So let's just do it like five times. Okay. Let's just do right. it five times. Okay, perfect. I can do that. <laughs> Although in it. honor of the latest Veritasium uh, video, I wanted to say 37. I oh, that's not bad. I, I'll do 37. You want to do 37? Not, okay, yeah, 30, yeah, yeah. I do, 37. Usually it's 69. Like that's the give. That's all. Uh, like yeah, the 37 is not. 42. Yeah, 37 is not bad. We'll do that. 37 is all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Dude, one, Derek, two, three, Derek just did a big old video on like 37. Like if you ask people to like, give you a random number from one to 100, like more people will say 37 than you would. You would. Oh, expect. Weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'd never heard that really before. I would. Uh, well, the, he's like the number one was 69. He's like, but yeah. we took that out because sure. everybody's gonna say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. Three, yeah. two, one. Good luck, everyone. Good luck.
look. Get that palm. Can I just say, like, Polymaker, dude, when they started doing the three kilo cardboard spools. Joe Russ. Joe, Joe Russ, Joe. you are our Pretty winner. Cool Congratulations. We'll give you some, some quick sound effects here. Let's do, let's see, what do we got? We got <laughs> two. Yeah, I'll do air horn. I'll air horn for you. Congratulations, <laughs> Joe. You are a winner. So I will, again, I'll reach out to you the next 24 hours. You will get an email from me and you'll put in your info and Polymaker will uh, send you a gift card. So congratulations and thank you everybody for entering in. Uh, okay, we're, three kilogram Polymaker spool. Yeah, what man, saying? they do the big, they're doing the big spools now. So I print, uh, I don't know if you've seen like my turntable rep box that I have, like the, my entire farm uses those because like swapping. Yeah, 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 down below, the down below with a, uh, right. it sits, and, so, so, yep. Yeah, and so it's like I'm always looking for the big spools, um, but uh, historically, like those, the 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 filament companies would use the um, the same spools they would use for like the like if you go down to Home Depot and you see what they got the cables wrapped around or the wire. Yeah, electrical, around, like like yep, yep, big honking ABS spools take up a lot of space, and it was just it would just crush me to have to like throw those away. It's a lot uh, of plastic. Yeah, a lot of plastic, and so I was like stoked when they started doing. I want to say it's three keys. I don't think they do five keys polymaker yet. Maybe. But the, the fact that it's cardboard is great because that's right into the recycle bin. Yeah, I don't think that they do five. Yeah, they might. Zombie might know. Um, okay, so I am removing the... Attach the buddy boards in the back. The man, the server, the pads. Peel off the blue protector. Okay, so before I stick it, I am pulling off the blue pads. Yeah. Cool. All right. And you'll see in the box there, you see how there's those little raised dimple spots. Those are exactly where they it's supposed to line up. So they give you yeah. a good target to land on. But don't press down. Just pro tape yeah. for it. Don't press Until down. Until you get like, the screws in. Yeah. Just just okay. kind of lay it where it's supposed to be. And you'll see from like where the, the network, uh, you know, the, the jack for the network cable and yep. all that stuff will line up. Okay. So this needs to go like this. And we're going to airdrop it in. Uh, let's see. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to swap AirPods because we've been streaming long enough that I know that at some point my battery is going to die. Oh, and see, I put both in. You warned me not to put them I both in. I told you, in. dude. I told you, man. Right. <laughs> Wait, so I got to I gotta go left? Which one's the cool one again? The cool, oh. left is cool. Yeah, left, left is cool. Is cool. Okay, left is yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to one so the other one can charge up a little bit. Okay. I don't know if you saw it, but I actually, um, I actually in the thumbnail left my yeah, left did. AirPod in. <laughs> I did. I did see it. I did All see right. it. Why is Did it you not? see I had the wrench over my ear on the other one? I don't know if you caught that little subtle. Because we had all the tools. We had all the tools, and then I like I had a wrench tucked behind my ear on one of them. I don't know that I did. Okay, so let me. I don't. I'm trying not to push. I'm gonna. Okay. First, I'm gonna swap AirPods. Then I'm gonna start putting screws in. I feel like the. I feel like I'm having a hard time aligning both sides of it on the screws. But there we go. I believe in you, brother. Uh oh. You there? Yeah, you're there. Loud and clear, loud and yeah. clear. Oh, they have five kilo spools uh, for a few things, but I don't know. Okay, I don't know if it's cardboard. Zombie says I can barely use three kilogram spools. Polymaker has five kilogram spools, but I think they're still plastic. Gotcha. Yeah, I just, I really wanted those uh, those cardboard. Um, so I don't know, three three is okay. Three is okay, five is better. 10, 10 is nice. I can't actually, 10s, 10s get too tall to fit even in the cabinets. Actually, I haven't tried it in the latest one. I'm gonna have to look because I haven't I haven't used the 10 key in a while. I think I remember when you launched the. Did, I think you launched that full like the under the under version one at wasn't it at Murph a couple years ago or no? Earth or Murph, one of those. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's underrated. Unfortunately, it's like that's one of the things like my buddy that's the cabinet maker next door like makes for me. But it's like what he charges me for it. Like I wish I wish I could bring. Like the price could be lower if I could actually manufacture it like cheaper somewhere. But the other problem is it it's stupid heavy to ship, right? Like it's at that oh. edge of like where it's just not practical to like ship to a lot of people, you know, or yep. they don't want to pay for that. So. Shipping's expensive, man. I, I, um, I mean, the video I'm doing this Friday or this for this Saturday's video is on. Why are we not? Hold on. Let me figure out something's going on here. There we go. For some reason these screws were a little bit. 
Yeah, it, it'll it'll tend to like want to twist a little bit because the spring on that um, that land cable jack uh, will will yeah. kind of push it out a little. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that was what I was running into. I was like, what am I doing wrong? But it's it's just the it's this like you said the spring when you're pushing into the port until you get a screw in there it sort of springs it back out again. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I was just the. Um, the fence, there's the part that I was debating on getting and replacing it. It's just one of the posts that I ended up not because the post itself was 50 bucks, but the post has to ship via freight. So it's a minimum $150 to get this $50 post delivered. And I was like, yeah, not happening, man. I'm just gonna use what I got. So yeah, ship, shipping yeah. is not cheap, dude. I, I don't, I mean, that's something, I mean, well, and, it friend, it's, and it kills me because it's like, I want people to like use it and I want to get feedback and I want like, you know, people to get excited yeah. about it the way I get excited about it. But, um, you, that's the challenge as a small business, like to hit critical mass to where you start getting the best shipping rates mm -hmm. and then, and then, and then the packaging, right? So the main thing isn't just the, the shipping, but it's like the packaging has to be so much bigger because I have to be able to protect everything. Cause if it just like sure. the heavier it is, the more likely it is to get damaged when it gets yep. dropped. And so it's just like, it's just not worth it. Right. At some point where if like I'm getting too many damaged things and having to reship it and all that stuff, then it's just like, nope. And then yeah. I'm in a, like, if I was somewhere where it's even feasible for like people to do will call, that'd be great, mm. but nobody's going to drive to Auburn to pick one of these things up, you know? So N not central, central location. Yeah. Oh, I screwed up. I screwed up. What'd you do? You put it <laughs> put in the a... ground hole, didn't you? You did. Yeah, I did. Is this the temptation? I, I, dude, dude, I, I thought I, I, I was I like, I was like, this hole feels kind of tighter than the rest. It's because I think it is. Like, I think maybe maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like it's slightly different than uh, the other ones. Maybe not. Okay, so I need well, to move this ultimately, guy. Well, ultimately, ultimately, one will go in there, but that's where your the uh, the ground the cable. Wire. Yeah. The yep. Ground wire goes, and so that that has to go in there. Uh, hey, BBs. Uh, the Polymaker cardboard spools are great. Right into the recycle bin. Um, it was easy to put zip ties in before the board. Wait, wait. Was I supposed? Oh, to you didn't do ties? you didn't do you didn't do your zip ties in yet, did you? No, you sh that's fine. Ties. No, no, no. Zip ties don't come until okay. later. But yeah. they're just saying like you could do it first. Gotcha. I, I I disagree. I'm following I the order of operations, man. <laughs> yeah, you're following instructions well. Right. I approve. Yeah. Pooch approved. All right. Why are we not the same? You know what's kind of nice about being just like I'm like only really two steps ahead of you, but yep. it's like giving me nice like fresh reminders so that it's like, you know, as you're going through, I'll be like, oh yeah, that's that's what I just did. And Where are you at right now? What are you working on? I'm just I'm just doing like uh, I'm on step 31. I'm just getting the Y motor holder ready and stuff. Okay. Not that far. Okay, so I've got mounting the buddy board is done. That looks correct. Now it is zip tight. Take a closer look at the X uh, buddy box. There are four perforations on the metal case, which should be on this side. So you can kind of see a couple of them. One, two, three, and four. Um, it says proceed very carefully. Use, use the X holder. It's a zip tie guidance. Place the X holder behind the lowest perforation, like the picture. Push the zip tie through the protrusion to the X holder. Keep. Okay, so. That's this guy. Boop, boop, boop. Yep. Okay, so you basically just don't want them to go behind the board right now, is what it's what it's getting at. Exactly. Okay. So this is a fun little combo tool. So we're gonna use this in the next uh, when we do the X assembly uh, as well. But. Um, this is one of the 40, so there's 45 prints. So if you're printing the parts at home, there's 45 parts that you print, but the machine itself only uses 43 because two of the parts are for, they're basically tools. Yeah. Which is cool, right? This is so a this great, is, this is a, this is a double use tool. So that acts as a little hook to help guide your, your zip ties here. And then it'll act as a little hanger when we're setting up the X axis. Dude, this, uh, let, me see, let me not speak too soon, but this is fantastic. So I can see now, if I didn't have this, then right. I really would have been kicking myself for not preloading right. these zip ties. I can see, I can see why a few people said, um, you know, it's easier to get them in before, which it still is based off. It is if you're not here. using that tool. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, and and there's there's a lot of you know it's debatable like order of operations. Like yeah, you could sure. totally, you could totally do it you know other ways. 
Yeah, but this definitely helps with uh, with feeding it around there. Let's see. Uh, sell build 25, 25 kilograms is the way to go now for manufacturing. Uh, dude, what? I, <laughs> you'd have to have a, such a smooth um, feeding, like, like spool system for it. I, I just, I don't know. I mean, extruders yeah. do have a lot of pull now, but I also feel like 25... I don't know. It's a lot of inertia. Even... <laughs> well, that's, that's why I took. Uh, what, that's why I went to the turntable design, where you put the thing on its side, because it takes a lot. Le like you're not, you're not having to really, uh, overcome the mass of the spool to try to spin it on its arbor or on its flanges. When it's yep. laying on its side, like it doesn't really take a lot, and and it doesn't really matter if it's much bigger. Which is why it surprises me that like more like people haven't started doing designs like that for larger spools but i think when they're talking about 25 keys like that's what a lot of the filament manufacturers will actually spool onto and then they re-spool from that onto like individual smaller keyless. yeah gotcha. so the 20 to 25s are, are usually like those big old spools um i don't i think a few manufacturers will like sell them like that but that is a that's a big heavy honking yeah. thing to ship too sure. i mean dude 25 kgs in pounds We're talking 50 and pounds. it takes up a lot of space too so yeah. there's like there's diminishing return i think is my point mm -mm. all right we've got zip ties are in it was it was it was more of a um technique thing once i figured out like if you if you keep oh, let me just show it because it's uh side cam there we go so there's a little channel in the center of this guy and as long as you keep the zip tie in the center channel, it really isn't difficult to have it like loop the correct way. But on the first one, I had it kind of going off to the side and it was a little bit more difficult to pull it through. But yeah, this tool works. Re I would be using probably tweezers otherwise, I would think, to try to get the zip tie pulled through. Uh, yeah. But this, this certainly is a nice little aid in, in getting these installed. Well, the, the other thing I'll do here, throw me the, throw me the full screen for a sec. Yeah. And again, they don't really tell you this, but like pro tip. So like, I'll take um, I'll take my my cable tie, oh, you'll and then I'll I'll, I'll pre yeah. I'll pre curl it just that a little like sense. that, right? Yep. And so then it right through. Yep, I I've, I've done that with what was it that I've done? Maybe it was when I was trying to feed belts through on building a core X Y because yeah. a lot of times the recommendation yeah, is to use a yeah use a zip tie to sort of. It's easier to get that in the channel and then have your belt sort of ride on that versus trying to curve your belt around your your idlers or your pulleys. These are All just right. the, like the little the little pro tip things that you know you do enough builds and stuff you start to pick up these things along the way. Uh, let's see, why idler M310 screw and two uh, and then M3 oh yeah square nuts square nuts yep get those out and put them in a tray too because you're gonna be square nutting like crazy <laughs> i'm surprised i haven't heard you mention really food yet dude how are you feeling uh, actually, well because because we're coming up on snack time here so you know, yeah we're you're almost there you're like three steps away from gummies uh, <laughs> and then i'm gonna get i'm gonna bust out a little snacky that uh my girlfriend made for me yesterday so this is dangerous dude because she bakes uh -huh. and oh. uh yeah, and she's, yeah good cook like a good bake and i've never i've never had a partner that's really been into baking or cooking before uh -huh. and uh she's really good and so she like uh she was here hanging out she's like okay i'm not gonna see you for a couple days so i'm gonna make you like some of these things so you have them and the problem is is then i just like eat them all in the first day and yep. then I, I don't have them for a week anyway so yep she texted me as soon as she got home yesterday she says how many of those did you eat already and i'm like three <laughs> <laughs> It's similar. Erin will buy like a bag of candy and just have it sit there. She'll have like one piece and let it sit there for like weeks, dude. And I'm like, bro, like what's going on here? And and like I, I walk by the candy bowl and I'm like, all right, one. And I'll, you know, I'll eat one. I'm like, all right, just two. I'm like, all right, five. I, I kid you not, man. Like I, I started asking her, please don't buy because she works she works at yeah. costco and yeah. she oh, buys no. costco dude she came home no. with this platter of cinnamon rolls and had yeah. like half a cinnamon roll and i ate seven cinnamon rolls in a week dude <laughs> i just like i'm like well it's like two twofold like one i'm like i don't want to waste and two i'm like these are freaking delicious Brother, so I, i'm right with you dude i have no yeah, self-control no yeah, self-control i have to say none, the same dude. thing i'm like you're not okay. allowed to leave that here yeah 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 
I, I, like my way of putting myself in check is by not having the, the, the temptation in front of me. Exactly. So if it's not yeah. fair to you to have this thing in a, in a eye, you know, eyesight where I, I'm going to be seeing this thing and, and yeah. So, so these, uh, these oatmeal bars that I'm going to bust out here at snack time in a second are yeah. like reasonably good for me. Like, thankfully, like, cause that, that was sure. her compromise. She's like, okay, I want to bake something. I'm like, well, can you at least make the, it's like a little banana, some peanut butter and oats. And, and they're just like these little yummy little oat bars and I love them. And, but they're not super, they're not overly sweet. They're like, cool. you know, there's yeah. a little protein powder in there cause I need my protein, you know? I gotta get those gains, man. I gotta, I gotta, get, I gotta gains, get my gains dude. however I can. By eating. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pooch in all gains. caps. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all swole. Yeah. From from eating. Oh yeah. my god. Swole. Yeah, I, uh, I, I would take what you had over what I got, but these are I got my granola. Call on my my GBs, man. My granola. Oh, those balls. are good. Those are good. <laughs> yeah. Those are good. Dude, yeah. that's dangerous. So she works at Costco, so you're getting like all the all the yeah. bulk. Yep, yeah. yep, she, uh, oh, did I screw up, dude? Don't tell me I screwed up. What'd you do, what'd you do? No, you couldn't have been, I mean, that's the beauty is, of this, too. It's like, there, you really can't mess up that bad. Is a square nut supposed to go on both sides of this thing? Because I, I put it in the wrong side. No, there's, 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 yeah, they're on both sides. They go on both sides. Okay, cool, okay, cool. If you see a pocket in the prints, like, just throw you a square nut it's, there. Okay. You're gonna, yeah, <laughs> right. there, it's not, it's never gonna be really left empty. Yeah, so she, um, yeah, she, she works, at Costco and so like it's you know nothing is in small uh no. nothing is they don't small. do small they don't do small there do they it's interesting though um that because it's in Idaho Costco's here don't sell booze like uh they sell well, that's a state wine? that's a state thing isn't it it's a state right? thing. it's a state thing yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. have to have like state liquor stores there yep, yeah exactly Utah was like that there's a lot of states that are like that I didn't realize that. I, I knew yeah. Utah was like that because I had driven through there once, and I remember like my dad saying, "Oh, they've got dry, like dry, well, dry counties all together where you don't have anything." But um, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. really surprised. I was like, "Huh?" De Delaware's like that. There's a lot. There's a lot of states like I think Seattle used to be. Uh, sorry, uh, Washington. Joel was just telling me about that when I was up there last. He's like, "There used to be," and I think it was like a big deal when they changed the law so that like uh, you could get liquor in the, in the. But and then the, and then there's somewhere it's like there's times a day where they won't sell it to you, right? Where it's yeah. like you can get yep. it there, but then you can't buy it if it's after you know whatever time. So, uh, did I miss the giveaway? You did, yeah. Sorry, Jose. Wait, you were were you entered into it at least? Um, yeah. It, well, it's funny though, coming from California, where I live, like when I think of like going to a liquor store, it's always like. Pretty sketch, but like here, like no, 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 you you have to go. Like, like the liquor stores where everybody goes if you want something yeah, other yeah, than yeah. you know seltzer yeah, beer, or, or beer and wine. Yeah, well, yeah. beer and wine. I think it. I think it just depends on the type of yeah the state you're in, right? Yep. Yeah. No. Oh shoot, I did that wrong. That's okay though. I got time. All right. Why? Oops. What am I doing here? There we go. Do hey, I just want to take a moment to tell you that you're doing fantastic. Okay. Thank very, you very much. And I'm, and I'm proud of you. Dude, that's really, a really sweet thing to say. <laughs> I, uh, there's thunder and lightning going on right now. What? Do you yeah, know I thought storming? it was sunny when we started streaming, dude, and now it's thunder, man. Just getting a thunderstorm coming through, Gosh. huh? Gosh, yeah. I, I did see that yesterday I was outside doing some yard work, and I looked at the forecast, and yesterday was like 75, and today said thunder and lightning, and tomorrow yeah. says snow, and I'm like, what the heck, man? <laughs> man, you're getting all the weather, like, yeah, at the same time, Yeah, huh? okay. it's definitely different right. than, uh, different than what we're used to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, SoCal, I mean, dude, you were, you were in, like, the land of the sunshine, so. Yeah, with the exception of my parents have a cabin up in Arrowhead, so there, there okay, was, okay. yeah, there is some... Up there. Dude, I must have screwed up on one of my... One of the nuts didn't go in all the way, and now the screw doesn't want to... Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, you no. got it. So I just, I just, maybe I just had a well, little... Flip it over. Is it is it still there? <laughs> Make sure it didn't fall out. No, it's there. Okay, I think I'm... Okay. I have to cross-thread it. Hold on. Let me pull it out. What I'm going to do is, is take this part off and make sure that I can get the screw in without... Man, it's crazy outside right now. Um, make sure I can get the screw in... It doesn't look that crooked to me. Um, let's see. I'll move my trash can over here. I'm realizing, you know, I gotta get like a little, like, I think I'm gonna get a little staging table or something I can put back here. So I can like lay stuff out. 
Because I feel like even a giant desk like this, like I feel like I just like completely occupy everything. Are you saying you need more surface area? I think, well, I mean, we always feel like we need more surface sure. area, right? But sure. I'm thinking like having a little staging area like behind me where I can like tease some stuff up, but it's not taking up the main workspace because I want to be flipping and, you know. Dude, I, I totally, I, I stripped this part. <laughs> Oh no, did you did you cross thread that nut? Is it is yeah, it just it's, jammed? It's exactly. It's spinning, yeah. And now it's spinning. Oh. Yeah, dude. So I'm gonna see if I can apply some pressure to it and then Man, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. Okay, so you know what? This is like one of the one of the downsides of the square nut trap. Like uh -huh. and not to speak about like because I, I think it's it's brilliant in a lot of its applications, but like yeah, if you are not watching your your torque on this stuff and you spin it, it's like you're almost better off like firing that print up and like just printing another one and like yeah. going again. Um, Let me see. I think that if I get a like a flathead, that maybe I can wedge it in there and sort of you know keep it from spinning, so I can at least get the screw out. But I, I sensed it when I first put it in. I felt like it didn't go all the way in. But I the problem I is even if you do that, Daniel, that the next one that you put in there isn't gonna have like purchase on the sides of the square nut too, and and it's gonna still potentially spin. So it's like you you might be able to hack it in. Let me let me try really quickly, and if not, I'll print it out. I just would. It's worth a shot. It's worth a shot. Yeah. Let's see, I don't have any flatheads up here. <laughs> Everything's a fill of. It's always like, why is it like that? I've got all sorts of flatheads, but when I need it, there's none. Exactly, because none that's Murphy's be law, man. That's Murphy's that law. Murphy's law. That's all right. You go grab what you need. I can keep everybody company. Yeah, let me see. Let's see if I just hold this like this. Actually, I need to take a bio break here for a second, I think. I think that T went right through me. <laughs> That's a good reason to not to use power tools on certain connections like this, or at least not until you know that you're getting like your threading in clean because it, it really yeah. shouldn't be fighting you. Like pretty much everything should just spin right into place. So if it's if you're getting a little resistance, it's always better to back it off and take a look. Sometimes those square nuts, too, I'll tell you, like they're not tapped well. Mm -hmm. it's just like chuck it grab another one and you're good to go you know it just depends or same thing with the hex it's not particularly the square nuts um yeah i'm gonna run to Probably the restroom real quick That's yeah okay. sounds great sounds great yep turn off my Here. mic it's <laughs> a bummer i will probably reprint it then um oh i've got some abs i guess i'll just do i don't really have I don't really have PETG. Uh, actually, I do have some PETG. I think I've got... Let me check really quick. I will be... Well, I'm not going very far, so you guys can still hear me. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Will it be dry? That is the question. This is some ESUN. This stuff's going to be old. Mm -mm -mm. I'll just do ABS for this part. So I don't have to worry about moisture. Um, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Yeah, just use just use ABS or ASA or whatever you got handy. I mean, it doesn't have what? to be PETG. What's the... Um, well, first off, I need to go, let's see. So Prusa Mark IV. At the top of that link, it should be a link to the where the printed parts are, if that's what you're looking for. And I can also tee up that particular part if you want me to just do the work for you so you can. Is it on printable? Why don't you... just the... Yeah, it is. It is on printable. So if you just search for Mark IV, Mark IV parts. Uh, let's see. Desktop. And then so. scroll, scroll down to, because there's a ton of files. You want the yep. uh, y, Frame. y axis. Up. Yeah, there you go. It's all. It should all line up with. Cool. There you go. Boom, you're already is, there. Is there, should I go with, um, should I go with like the Voron, Voron slicer set? I mean, they would be strong enough. They'd be overkill if anything, uh, as far as walls and infill. Yeah. Or is there set parameters yeah. for? I mean, it's one part and honestly, like it's not gonna, oops, oh, that's following me again. I don't want this following me around. 
Come back, come back and see. Print ASA. Um, what's the, I can't remember, what's the scale? Is it 1.1, 1. 1, is it 1% scale if you're going from PTG to, I feel like there's uh, only a scale factor, a slight scale. I mean, it's really small, but. You know, I want to say that when Steve and I did it, like we, I want to say we printed them as is and it worked out like I was, the, the traps were working fine. Um, okay. I mean, I it, just look, do a slice on it, like just at the, st at the stock profile and then uh, see what kind of time it takes. Sure. Um, uh, I don't, I don't think we had to start. Is Steve, is Steve still in the chat? I don't remember if he scaled it at all or not. And I think like, he was running. He was running on Boron, so I don't know. I think it might depend on what printer you're running on and stuff. He had a profile. Okay. For, yeah, I see 100.4 and 100.5 being recommended. I'll do. I'll do 100. I think 100.5 is what I've done in the past. It's such a small, and this is just the Y idler. So, I'm I'm gonna do 100.5. That sounds. That sounds good. Hey, Luke. Um, it looks like it's gonna take 37 minutes. Can I can I move forward without? Yeah. Um, it's not okay. gonna it's not gonna stall you that's something you can cool. easily do in the next step too so don't worry about yep. that okay so let me quickly scale we'll do 100.5 oops that's not right uh, uh, I, did, I did five what the heck just happened control z 100 oh it's because it highlights the whole thing 100.5 there we go so I did mine on the Mark IV with the ASA profile, just like as is. And so I don't know if they, they already have like any scaling tuned in, baked, baked sure. in. Um, yeah. Hey, but if, if there's a recommendation, then yeah, go with go with it. Yeah, I'll do the 100.5 for this one. Um, yeah, it sucks. I should have gone. Like, it's one of those things where when I put that square nut in, I was like, it feels slightly off. But I'm going to probably be fine. And of course, I should have should have gone with my gut and either... Pulled you know what? Point or... Better to learn this lesson now early than like, yeah, have it be true. one like while you've like spent an hour putting the next shooter together and having to take yep. it all apart again. Ain't no thing. Ain't no thing. Also, I know that I had originally said stopping at three my time. Uh, if I decide I want to go a little bit longer, do you want to drop off at three or or what's the what's your I, I want to be respectful. Am, to I'm you. open the rest of the day, so I'll just keep building along as, as long as you want to go, and then I'll okay. move on to the next thing. So I'm not worried cool. about it. Okay, sounds great. Okay, so the Y motor parts prep. So let's see. Yeah, we'll move on to that then. So uh, we need the da, 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 last piece from this bag. Uh, and then we've got our final pad. And what is this? This is M318s. We don't have those open yet. M318s. You making, you warming up some food? Or no? Yeah. Okay. I am. I'm uh, not warming it up. I'm just eating it cold. I just don't like eating on the stream. It's funny. I, I was, <laughs> I've been always kind of weird about that as well. Um, I remember on our, like I think it was the hundred thousand subscriber stream on the main channel maybe, and uh, I ordered pizza and I was just like eating pizza. I was like, this feels so weird. And then I sat down and I'm like, this. Uh, I'm like, normally we aren't doing like mukbang streams where you know the. <laughs> so I just um, yeah, I've gotten a little bit more used to it because Chat's always like, yeah, it doesn't bug us. I'm like, all right, all right. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we need a Y motor, which says it's labeled. 